going to be Lazy Freddy with the really solid team of Blue Mary, Ben Amaro, Isla. And then kind of on the same end with Fernandez featuring the Geese instead of like the, I think instead of the Blue Mary. So, I mean, both teams super strong. I mean, Lazy Freddy's been playing KOF for a long time now. I've known him since uh, KOF 13 days. He's always traveling, always enjoying the game. Smart dude, too. I mean, like, this dude is working like medical tech like master and he finds time oh to just hang out at KOF God. events and it's so cool to see like the busy folks like that making great time for great fighting games i want to say to all you people who are smart and talented like leave some leave some talent for the rest of us don't be good <laughs> at fighting games and also be handsome and also have a really important job that helps people oh my god Right now, Fernandez, though, with the aggression, of course, he's one of the best points in the game. Absolutely just throwing Blue Mary out real quick. It's just, I mean, character's got it all. Great buttons, great specials, safe pressure, and just, there, there is, like, no deficit in this character's kit. Like, oh, no, he doesn't have a DP. It's like, oh, that's the worst thing you got? No problem. <laughs> and even then, you got a counter, right? And, and it messes with some of the game because of how fast it is. But yeah, you're, you're saying it would best in class normals almost across the board, across the entire kit. So extremely strong point character. But Benny Maru, also one of the best characters in the game and expertly using the perfect amount of meter to kill right there. So nice. We'll see him twice. The mirror match is going to come through. Lizzie Freddy takes Geese out. But this is a Fernandez with a lot of bar. We saw it's all he takes is just one crouching B into a quick sequence with EI kicks. And then just momentum starts shifting heavily. But Freddy was the aggression. Nice DP on the overhead string after the jump in. Just trading blows. Yeah, he's just lightning really, really well here. Shoves himself in the corner, but, you know, was responding really quickly. Spans Did it spend like double? It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said it's about one touch. Just needs any little hit into an EX or even just regular yeah, EI kick. And there we go, Fernandez. Solid lead. It's going to be the Isla for Freddy. But uh, I think Fernandez is happy in a great position that he's in right now. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Isla, it's, Isla I, I think that we've like shifted a little bit towards anchors that don't necessarily need a ton of meter to blow you up, but rather characters that can operate very well with little little or a lot mm -hmm. and uh isla is like perfect for that because she only needs a couple of bars to like even loop her own offense and it's very scary oh, speaking of starting the cex and then there's the, one of the best crosses i've ever seen in a fighting game oh yeah it is just absolute insanity especially like chaos not a game with like cross protection like other fighting oh. games right so if you're getting switched up crossed up you are in for the freaking blender Again, Freddy dispatches a character relatively quick, but still in a deficit. It's like, it's nice that they get some stuff going, but it's always with all their meter they have represented and they're never in a true lead. Yeah, but the big problem here for Lazy Freddy is the three bars on the side of Fernandez who hasn't been able to get anything done with it just yet, but it's kind of the right. name of the game for Freddy. Just don't let them get that started. Build your own meter. Nice to be into max mode. One of the characters that gets to use that max mode so well, only on two bars. Yeah, that was really good damage and setting up. What's another one touch situation? Although, there we go. Freddy's starting to get to offense on themselves, going for the patented, uh, kind of like Eurocom style, just one stop, throw pressure EX, spend that bar, spend that cash. Great situation until one touch. There it is. It is. Nice. Just catching uh, Fernandez either up backing or just standing. Either way, Lazy Freddy steals that right away. And that was kind of like the loss for Fernandez, who spent a lot of their resources with that max mode, but then couldn't find a hit afterwards. And Freddy, with momentum and meter, and not like dropping everything immediately, just was able to close out. Yeah, um, I, I like kind of what I was saying before, like Hydran is like another character that's like getting in that anchor position quite often. When mm -hmm. you have a character like that, that doesn't necessarily need a ton of meter and the anchor position, it can still be very effective. Your other characters get the freedom to spend meter almost however they want. And then if you have confidence in your play style and you're solid, like that anchor character can play exactly like Freddy should, where you're playing mostly fundamentally solid, not taking too many risks, and then really, really taking advantage of your hits. Yeah, right now though, I, mean, I want to see a little more out of the Blue Mary for Freddy, getting the hard knockdowns, catching, uh, dash, uh, back dash, uh, that's the counter hit, let the two hits on a close C hit. 
but because it was airborne, not able to get much of a juggle there after the under pressure, but I like that mash out from Freddy. Sword approach here. This feels like, yeah, Freddy just cannot take, cannot help but take incremental damage. Well, yeah, I mean, I think Lazy Freddy will be happy that, like, he got that previous win, but in general, like, the Blue Mary was kind of negated in both games. Yeah, I think it's something like that's, you know, it's, it's, it's always rough, right, as pe players like jockeying for position and meter. Blue Mary definitely excelling with meter. Even with meter, though, and there's Freddy getting the combo, quick combo, putting Geese in the corner here, and then more just good safe pressure. A lot of room to back it up and just take their time, especially they can avoid taking damage, don't have to worry about getting a lot of life back if they don't use a lot. Freddy doing really well to cage his opponent into the corner right now. Using a lot of really good buttons, space control very well, and even taking a very calculated risk towards the end there and dispatching Geese pretty, pretty healthily. Yeah, it's, it's been a tail to tape, right? We're just seeing uh, Freddy lose a character, bring it right back, and keep Fernandez honest. Fernandez can't, even though they're getting a lead, they can't maintain it, and Freddy's taking advantage of that. And this time with a lot of bars, so next hit from either one can be pretty spicy. Oh, all right, gets the cross up. Doesn't get the confirm afterwards, but Fernandez sitting with those four bars. Definitely gonna look for that opportunity to just try to take the lead. A little nice, little stagger right there. More than that, jab, jump V, doing the job and doing it well. And Fernandez this time with a very much stronger lead than the last game with their second character. Their Benamar is looking really, really good here. Didn't have to spend a lot of the meter either. As long as they can avoid those quick cross-ups and Freddy getting that offense going, I think they can maintain it and take us to a game three. We'll see how it goes. This four bar Islas on deck. Yeah, that four oh. bar is actually so just enough to kill two characters too. So just about the opportunity, but this character's so good at controlling space. Two shocking victories. Fernandez tying it up pretty pretty quick and casual was. Yeah, Freddy just getting uh Things by those jump bees until it's some nice damage. And I love like there was a moment Fernandez just preemptively rolled back. Like yeah. literally after getting like an air reset, landed, rolled backwards. Freddy rolled towards Fernandez, and Fernandez just said, "Cool." All according to Kaku and got that huge combo there. And it's those like those those little things, right? It's and that's kind of like the Mexican play style. It's just making these like very very deep and just. Call, these deep call outs that you like mm -hmm. an average fighting game player wouldn't like go so far but they're just like they're reading like five pages ahead and committing yeah kof is like it, it depending on like how much you're willing to commit for it, it gives you a different amount of reward right like you could always roll os those situations but something like that could give you a healthier reward and that's kind of a, a thing that we really like about the game but Lazy able to, oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Unfortunately, dropped the ender there and lets Geese turn around the momentum. And quick back roll. Maybe to just bait out the magical arrow, no dice. And just more team uh, jump B coming through here is just <laughs> Fernandez looking insurmountable. Although, Freddy getting a small chance here. Have to be careful. Gets a punish. Taser up. Full damage here. Not going to be able to kill, but at the very least, can maybe take the first character. Oh, oh spicy. That was real spicy, but it didn't work out. Still, I think Lazy Freddy would be happy. That is the best interaction that Mary's had in this set so far. And we'll see. I mean, if they can close out quickly on the geese, it'll kind of keep that tail of tape moving. But Fernandez finding the damage, putting in the corner, ain't going to spend the extra cash just to get time spent and add more damage here. Yeah, but you need to get the kill now because you're going to recover most of that health back. Nice cross up. Beautiful time too. So when you when you spend meter like that in on early rounds after like round one, you're basically betting that you're going to either make the round extend as long as possible or you're trying to like, you know, get past that 300 threshold. So think about like how much meter you're spending in terms of how much your the opponent's gonna get back if they kill you. Absolutely. Oh my god, we're just swinging and swinging in between and everything. Fernandez, though, full in control here. Double overhead. Good pressure, though, from Freddy. Freddy can keep his corner, but nice. Fernandez ready for that jump. Ooh, super. I like it. Spend it. Nice. Okay. 
great buff for Benny, being able to confirm the last hit. Oh no, tried to That's confirm that super or that far D into max mode and it did not work out. A hallmark of playing Benny second, being, or being able to access that far D into more damage a lot more often but that's a lot of meter spent on lazy freddy and he's asking this isla for a little bit more now yeah i mean this is the same situation with game two i mean Benamaro on fredanza's side not taking a lot of damage gets the grab though neutral jump i like it there's the dp whipping a little slow and not the best so fredanza is now setting up a situation where two more good hits can put a wrap a kibosh on freddy but freddy with the corners expert jump eh yeah, playing, trying to cage, but that drill, changing the trajectory of Benny. Okay. Again, just getting hit by these EXs and then nice jump over. Okay, Freddy reading the room and taking advantage of it. And now we're down to our last characters as the Isla mirrors go to the side. Who moves on to a top eight qualifier? Yeah, all, all things considered, not a bad position for Lazy, but obviously the two and a half bars on the side of Fernandez access, gives him access to little better combos, but just a bar is good enough for Isla. Gets their ball rolling. Just needs to find that opening. Oh, getting the call out. I like that roll forward. Just trying to see if Freddy would bite. But Freddy, at least I'm learning from game number one, or two, sorry. Yeah, it's nice and safe. Oh, big hit. Fernandez, one away. One more touch. Oh, here we go. Trying to blow back to keep the pressure off. Full jump B being able to avoid the pressure there. Only a half bar. Another guard cancel blowback used for Fernandez. Unable to spend the meter in any way to actually get damage on the Lazy Freddy. Kind of the issue of the first game. Exit wins, there's another blowback, it's all the meter gone, but I mean, just one combo from Fernandez's side. Pressure safe. Freddy busts out. Oh, this is getting scary, just across a beautiful block. Hard bar, a big deal. Left. Lazy Freddy has to back up and, and let it recover, and that's time. <gasps> Lazy Freddy might not have great 2C. That's it, though. Cross up. Let's go. And we need one more. Oh, oh, that's 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 it. It. oh, no. Oh, the 2 be match on wake up. The, the walk up throw. So you had, you had so many, like, great, great cross ups that Isla just kind of avoided being one of the few to get tapped, which, you know, in the future, who yeah. knows? But for now, uh, our two teams are locked in. I'm Sombra versus Raven. I know Raven's been grinding out the game a good about. And it's always nice to see more uh, U.S. representation here. So let's see what Raven can do against Mexico Sombra. Also good seeing Naj. Love this character. I think she's so unique in this version of the game. Run of the Athena on point versus Terry. I think Terry stocks have been rising quite a bit lately. This character incredibly safe. Cranks your guard like hell. And is really difficult to deal with on point when you don't have meter to spend to get him off you like this and it, it's this is why like you are just taking safe pressure to safe pressure and your guards Ooh. getting taxed but raven finds a way out get some space behind him and some damage too i mean those are two like really good sequences so are even spending the bar for the guard cancel blowback and wants to at least put more pressure here keep it nice and crisp but yeah just swing in no problem here Stormbird not feeling any of the pressure so Mr. Terry Bogard doing what he does best, getting that first uh, character out. Yeah, I mean, at that point with the guard bar so low, Raven had to make a decision. One of the nods now. The character doesn't really do well on the defensive end. So see how he plays this one with two bars. Oh yeah, just checking the mask with the dunk. Oh, had to get out. Yeah, a little too high, so it wasn't plus even after hit. And just setting up this, look at this, just continuing. No fear here, right? And Raven just not really having any response, right? As just been Sombra, full throttle, revved up, and just unleashing everything and then some. 
Yeah, Naj kind of struggles with any really aggressive character and really safe character, and uh, especially when they have good air buttons. But Raven on the Kukri now. This character can definitely make a comeback. Not the same way that you think Isla does, where she mixes you up all the time, but rather the control that this character has. Oh, there you go. Raven getting some damage here, setting up a Sand Clone. No quick tech on Sombra's side. Stop in this corner here. Goes for the big DP. No good. And uh, Raven, at least. Looking solid with the Kukri, getting that offense going, and Terry having just to take it. So that's, a, that's at least something to get things going here. Yeah. Happy to see some Terry, though. I do think that that character uh, kind of got underrepresented for too long in this patch, but underrepresented continues show afterwards. Oh, okay. Do we have these? Yes. Oh, the damage. It's adding up. Stun is there. We're gonna get still one tornado. We can build the bar, but it's fine. Gonna send Kukri packing and Sombra. Clean game number one. Losing the Terry, sure, but Joe's got his back. Yeah, this is a. Uh... Both characters kind of don't get represented enough, and I think both characters are way better than their pick rate. So mm -hmm. I love seeing it from Sombra. I, I really, I really do think Terry is like way better than people think he is uh, understandable i mean like i said it's just solid but that's the thing about like kof right you get lost in the sea of solid oh so yeah for it sure is, and it's fine right there's so many great characters to choose from that you can kind of find one that fits your niche even though like most people will lean towards the one that does what a character might do but better but it doesn't mean that a character can't handle themselves and we'll see if raven can handle himself here in game number two give him some space here just trying to get some room with the pinches Pinchy, pinchy. I think it's really important for Raven to do better in this point matchup because Naj is not good defensively versus a character like Terry. So in order for to give his Naj the best opportunity to play the game, he needs to play better on this character. And that's the guard crush. Wasn't able to get anything off of it, but that's the threat of this character. Being able to play this safe and already cranking 60% of your guard. Uh, nice. Oh my god. Raven now just saying you want to play spicy? Bringing it right back to you. But a full combo here from Sombra. Gonna have double super available. Oh my god. Just oh, let it rock. Walk up through? Not quite. Give a little, that's my little point run. character, dude. What the heck? <laughs> I thought we were having a good at old fashioned point player squabble. What is happening? Hey, point character with meters, good as any other. And corner combos we know in KOF are crazy good here when you're cash out. That means Sombra not gonna get the most life back, but makes a statement. Terry's still pretty healthy too. And uh, yeah, Naja, if she can't get going, it's gonna be a little bit rough. How to spend the guard cancel roll. Yep, oh, confirm this. Yes. Got two buffs. Frame trap into a full combo in the corner. Well done. Doesn't even need to worry about this Terry too much longer. And now going to the Joe, different kind of problem. Joe having a really, really strong fireball. But Sombra is kind of a Joe player that likes to get aggressive with the character. So we'll see how it goes. All right, Raven though. Got to power up, use the EX version to full stock. Setting up the cross-up situation. Nice blocks from Sombra, but the DP. And that was a huge chance for Raven to cash out, actually. Didn't quite take advantage of it. And it'll take a lot of damage for their trouble. Unfortunate. Yeah, that far C did get changed in the latest small patch to be cancelable, but I don't know if he was ready for that situation. Not the worst spot. I mean, Raven, if they could find this, this... Oh, they used to drop the card, actually. So that's all gone. Super though, nice reaction. But then wake up DP right back at you, attempting to throw anyone's game still. Oh, it gets tacked. Okay, Sombra in the lead. Joe still alive, but I mean, we saw the Kukri do some good stuff. But in, if it plays like last game, we'll bring out the geese for the finale. Yeah, it just needs to get rid of this last bit of health. And yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> just keep it nice and simple. Say, if you're going to fit it, you're going to get hit. We're going to the anchor battle. All right, not bad. Get him with a catcher quick, but now is four barred Geese Howard. Oh, we're trading Shatter Strike like that. Sure, it's scale damage, but it's still damage. And that's a great start here. Two bar available, and that's so much. Just, the lights get to punish. Tech and bowling in effect, and now one touch scenario. A throw will do it. Oh 
almost anything will do it and you're in the corner versus some of the best control of the game and Somer is able to take it two to zero over Raven here we go Raven fight back warmed up felt a little better than playing very controlled based characters a good way to go about it now we'll get into this one boom cube versus Yuri Kov two really strong characters we have in the United States scene Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, Yurikov running the East Coast really, really well, and always one of the one of the fan favorite players. But I always like watching Boom Cube. Boom Cube's been one of those ones that really taken a came with fifteen to heart, and it's always yeah. a treat to watch. As well, check with the light gets a quick combo, gets the same side mix up, and we're in the corner. You're in jail as Bijan is making a special appearance here. One of the characters that fell out of favor, despite still having like some good tools here and there, just not as wild with it. As she once was. So she's still cooking. Yeah, she kind of lost her spot to Isla, unfortunately. But as the kind of like premier mix up character that kind of gets in ones and runs you over. Uh, but still pretty good, honestly. She just needs a little bit more work than she used to. But I'm trying to get oh this Kyo going. Yeah, there we big go. Big whiff. I'm going to spend a little bit of bar here. Level yeah. one just to seal it on there. and. Yeah, one uh, errant reversal, and it means so much, especially later on in the point war when people have bar and can pop off. So nice for Boom Cube setting up that jump super well. And the cool thing about Kyo is that he doesn't actually need that much meter to operate. Even his better combos can only need like one or two EXs. So for the rest of the round, so as long as he's getting his, he can definitely save for K-Dash, who does really love having that extra meter. That's a big whiff there. And then Yashiro. Kind of in that pressure, but the run-up grab, not even command grab, we're just gonna get a regular throw over the overhead. And just throwing again. This is your Yurikov loves to just run up grab. That's always been like a mainstay of his whole pressure. <laughs> Characters that let him run stop in front, get a throw here and there. He has just been yeah, one of the grabbiest players. And that's just kind of the trademark, and no one really wants to check with like a light or a quick button there because just the risk of getting jumped in on with both big characters. Scary. Yeah, I love how Boom Cube played that round though. Went past the 42 second mark, so not recovering as much health as he could and getting meter for his K-Dash. Taking those throws, not a big deal. They take up a lot of time, but that is a big deal. A whiff DP into Oyash means this is gonna hurt. There we go. Kick just ragged on him, setting up the roll forward and just, whoa, miss, big whiff. Big chance for Boom Cube, but doesn't take advantage of it. And that was, you know, it's unfortunate Tim damage on the table, but at least Boom Cube still having the momentum here. Got a little bit of damage themselves and dashed over the corner. One bad jump can get air scoop though, so gotta be careful. Oh yeah, had to do something crazy because the guard Yo! bar. Nice read on the advance strike, or maybe even a throw one way or another. Boom Cube gets away from the situation, gets a huge punish and goes up on the character count. I like the, I mean, I like the attempt from Yuriko, but I don't think Boom Cube is really gone for those wake up grabs that up close. So the beginning of the first attempt of it, trying to get something started, but uh, Boom Cube is still maintaining a slight lead. This is, this is uh, Isla, and that is that nasty cross up, especially in that corner. So Benamaro versus Isla is going to be our final character here for game one. You don't usually see Benny in the anchor position here. Point in second is kind of his home, but character's so good. Obviously can play in this position. And nice counter hit CD confirmed into some huge damage. In a great position too. Here he got run up throw out of the corner. One Again, more time to get back to the to center. Do. But the green boom cube finally checking. Gotta be careful though. Run stop again. Again, as always, you're a because like, I gotta say it's not, ooh, wait, here's the that's good. And across the jump B, should be nuts. Let's go, okay, Boom Cube, I see you. As a, as a friend says, uh, air, Benny air throw might be the best normal, jump normal in the game. It, it the layers <laughs> of it is so good. It is just like, it is, it is like you're playing a Guilty Gear character. You have a, such a good button that it's attached to. And then you sometimes get an air throw from it and you're just like <sighs> yeah just the, the that's the thing right is that if you with it the normal that comes out so strong so it's like not that big of a deal and it rarely punishes you for going for air throws and as boom cube showed for us though so thankfully a wonderful setup situation afterwards boom cube taking the first one 
and uh, definitely playing really well. Gurikov sticking with the Jenny here. All right, there we go, another start. And then the same side once again. Yurikov not attempting for a roll, only for a block. Not quite working out. And then still in the blender. What a jump to see. Oh my goodness, his damage to stun. So as long as a K so as long as it's a KOF, baby, you can get mixed by Kyo. So as long as this is King of Fighters, you can eat a jump to see. That's that's the shit I like to see. Well, well done. Such a good way of going about it. Even the DP for Boot Cube. Okay, if he can maintain this, and I think grapplers typically have a tough time, in my opinion, with, with Kyo. Kyo has like these these such these special jump ins. The buttons work out pretty well. Anyone gets blended, it's you know, no problem. But it's just like it feels like Kyo has just like the the way his straightforward but solid game plan works against grapplers. It's pretty good. Too far. Oh. Big punish. Oh gosh. That's the couple of times that your has unfortunately dropped that scenario. Oh, I don't know if that combo wouldn't have killed, but I feel like with two and a half bars it would have, and Bunku chose not to. I don't mind it, but unfortunately I think that spells the end for Kyo. Still a really good lead here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, meaty grab means massive damage. So, I mean, Yurikov, you know, as one thing is they're, un they're relentless, right? They, they don't let people get into their head. They're committed to their game plan, you know, all the way throughout, so... It's uh, so important for KOF. Like, this game is played so fast, there's no way you don't get some mistakes in your ooh, game ooh. plan. You just have sexy. to roll with it and believe in it. Ooh, oh, 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 right back at you. It's how you use an advanced strike. Oh, that wake up just getting blown up and Boom Cube turning the tides of game one and said, oh, this is what you wanted to do? Hold on. And hit working out, that was massive. That combo, by the way, that first hit, like the... I never get tired of the Pong combos from K. Oh, they're sick, right? Yeah, uh, K Dash's supers actually don't do a ton of damage, so almost always prefers shoving more EXs into his combo. Oh, that's forcing Meter out of Yurkov. Roman just fighting these hits, getting the match, getting these throws, denying a Yurikov the grabs, and just timing everything so well. Yurikov has to wake up with it, gets the throw. Turn the ties, to jump in. Okay, this is good. Get that damage, cash out something here. I'm right, gonna put Yurikov in a really good position here. Oh, what, what a block on the mix up the level two. Not quite gonna do it. Gonna need one more. Love me. Kick her out of here. Oh, dude. Boom Cube takes it to the zero of Yurikov. Love that ending sequence as well. Going for the one inch punch, but buffering throw break in the middle of it as well that's something you can contribute to a little bit of money for the players and be greatly appreciated as antonov for el jarocho is coming through if you saw such a good performance out of this character from inferno kong from europe as they had some excellent matches they had a great run at the snk world championship so we know the danger of the big man and what he can do if he can find a hit yeah, so got a, a Good chunk of meat on the right side. Left side, good chunk of top tiers. Let's see how this goes along. Well, I'll shake yeah. my hand. Kula not playing games here. Got a great squad, especially you want something like Ben. He's so good at starting against the against the Clark. Good specials, great normals. It's the same amount of air control, but Harocho, there's a big hit. No spend money meter? No, we're just gonna set up a safe jump. I like the no tech as well from Kula. Ooh. Nice DP, so the damage, perfect spacing on that. Yeah, like max range. And the air grab, yes. They both have air throws, but it's not going to see, like, unless Clark is committing to the air grab, you're not going to be seeing, like, an air throw sometimes in those situations. Yeah. Because that jump B, jump C, jump C is not going to really be doing a move, it's not going to really play in that, that game, like, doing jump A or jump B. Right, yeah, like Clark's air to ground normals are, are phenomenal, and jump D is good for air to air, so you don't normally use that because you get to confirm it into EX tackle. But like his jump C is nowhere near as good as it is Benny's for that kind of like I accidentally whiffed it, but it's still okay. Yeah, I mean, look at that it's great hitbox, great air to ground. Plus, out with the XDP though, gonna spend some meter on it. Put a little bit of muscle on it. Get something going here. 
<laughs> but then, yeah, just, just, why not? Just hop over. No big deal. You get that time, quick kill, get a lot of life back, and yeah, cool is just comfortable. Oh, dude, that, I didn't expect that cross on myself. So, that, great stuff from Kula. Showing off, dude. The, the Benny's so strong. Ralph Anchor, man. Speaking of characters that don't need a lot of meter to blow you up, this is one of them. Classic Anchor, though. Definitely enjoys having the bar there and doing big daddy damage. But, you know, cool is pressing. No problem here. And then yeah. turning this around and just, just uh, oh, Rocha having a tough time of it. Even getting a jump and trading always kind of feels bad. Dude, and cool as Antires, so on point. Willing to spend the EXs just to get some good damage out of them. And then again, stop hopping. This is a controlled airspace, friend. Your jump CDs may work here, but it's not enough. And now we're going to get a thrower go, so EX slash. And clean game one is cool with the Benny. Big OCV to kick things off with set. Yeah, so there, there's a couple of reasons why he's using so many EXs. One, it's five frames, just like his B version. But the B version for Benny's DP only does a little damage. Uh, I'm looking it up right now. I don't know it off the top of my head, but it is 70 damage. That's not much, all things considered. Like, an air normal does about the same. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a deterrent. I mean, you know, obviously it adds up over time, but a BDP is not that much damage. So having the BD or having the EXDPs, which is just as fast, deals more damage, moves them forward, gives them a good situation afterwards, is definitely a way to say like, no, no, I'm making these hurt and you better have some better ways to come in. We're gonna see how that operates there as again, this tough matchup, although El Jarocho already getting things going here. Hasn't had to spend any resources yet, but in position. Any air reset. Oh, instead, just go for the Frankenstein into level one. Big scaling, but at least the damage is there. Ugh. You close out of your Jarocho, it's tough. You gotta find a grab, you gotta find something here, but cool and just staying solid. Bolton Var, nice trade. Alright. El Jarocho avoiding OCV, getting a character down early, and having a lead themselves. Great way for them to start things off here. Yeah, Clark's kind of like a momentum field based character, so if you can get one, you know, you can start getting the ball rolling. All right, wait a minute. Oh, give you a hug. The boss, it is free hug day at the Hydran camp. Drop the combo and crouch seek them and do wonders here. Should be close to finishing the job. Just one more hit. A little bit of chip. Ah, oh, nice try. Love the, I love the little delay from Kula that time. Kind of understood why he got gripped last time. Mm -hmm. And uh, makes that situation a little bit more safe for himself. Dispatches the Clark quite nicely, but now we're dealing with the Antonov. Don't usually see this character in second. You usually see him third because he just kind of explodes you. But if you have the meter, he can do the hurt. Oh man. Antonov under that pressure though. I mean, yeah. You said having the meter doesn't really have much here, so those like far D's aren't gonna lead to much. He needs to get a crouch C confirm or find a vertical macho. One of those two, but. Just trying to get through this can be so difficult. You got some good normals here and there, but hydran has got those in spades. Oh, straight in the air. Yeah, really difficult for this character to get out of the corner. And just... <laughs> that was a punish, by the way. Despite the roll forward and the hop forward from Hydran, Jump C just catching that man like the, the, the long errant pixel off his shoulder blade. Good lord. Definitely one of the big reasons why this character has played so much in this version of the game, man. It's incredible jump to see. Finger into Stormbringer. Now you're in the blender here. There's a quick thing, but I mean, like, what do you do here if you're Ralph? Ralph isn't Mr. Mixer, right? He's Mr. Big Buttons, but Hydra is just that too, except he does see gets so much more value. This is what I'm Ralph, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Pixel of health here. He can find the kill, which he can with this meter. All right, level two. Oh my God, this hurts. Ooh. Dive. But I mean, what do you do? One more. Oh no! Uh, and then the anti-air fireball. 
is gonna do it as cool is gonna clean house take it 2-0 harocha just at a tough spot even that last jump was super dangerous but ralph jones for a winner of this gets into uh, winners finals and Reno with a mean team, all right? A single Yashiro. Every time I see, like, Sombra or uh, Reno, his team just further, like, goes up. Always, like, I need to be cheaper. But not fully embracing it, like, 100%. But the Hydra here is going to complement the Ash and the O Yashiro very well. Yeah, I really like seeing Ash teams. Uh, it's kind of unique that we get it ran on point. This character, almost every patch has gotten some sort of buff to make this character not an anchor, but don't tell Ash characters that, or Ash players that. Reno taking it to heart, though. And I think I, it's I a really cherry. It. I don't see why not, right? I mean, we saw kind of like the, uh, you know, Fireball Apocalypse character kind of get destroyed with the yeah. Athena on the Raven side, but I mean, oh no, big gorilla damage. Ugh. Oh my that God. hurts, it's the one bar. What's Ash gonna do? Short, 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 flash kick. The green stuff. I mean, it's damage with the control, so at least there's that. It's a lot, so the, it's also a lot of specials. So you do, you are building a lot of meter for the rest of your cast, and you're playing with a lot of control, so definitely a lot of merit to it, and a, and a fantastic CD as well. I love that fadeaway shot. That was so nice. You think Burn Knuckle would have a uh, hot, much hotter time of a of, you know, of a hitbox, right? But that. Nah. All right, right. Yeah, bye bye. Clean up. Yeah, has to spend some meter for it. So unfortunately, Sombra going into this next one at a heavy meter deficit, but playing a character that loves control the space in front of him, Fireball TP character extraordinaire. Ooh, sweet spot. At least like. Is being able to crouch block a jump CD is always nice. I think Hydra will be able to maintain his charge. So I want to see like Sombra go for more like jump Ds or jump Bs. Right. Just to force Reno to stand and get rid of the chance of the uh, moon slash. You're seeing it right there. Already shoving a bunch of jump Ds. Nice confirm. Jump Ds nuts. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Got him. Relax over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that was like kind of a neat setup from Sombra there. I haven't seen that one before. Ooh. Are we going to heaven? Taking him there? No, we're just going to spend all that meter for really good damage. Not, no, pretty worthwhile. Yeah, and then gets that nasty cross up. Yeah. That's that's the thing, right? It's not just the damage, but it's also the cross up afterwards. Like, it is the perfect setup for an ambiguous left right and fantastic damage for the meter spent. I mean, that, that's, that's the name of the game for the characters. Why is one of the best? Yeah, just turning that right around. Now, Reno just. In full control, Hydern, just the man with the plan, but the big boss himself, Goose Howard. Final Rapukin, it's not the final one, we'll see a lot more. Listen. <laughs> Love that slight walk up 2A. <laughs> Mixing it up just a little bit most of the time, the, the meaty CD there is kind of the option, is it self times itself, but going for something a little bit different that time. Four bars on the side of Oyash means, I think, two combos from almost any situation is going to be able to do it. I want to see the climax counter. I want to see it just spin. I want to see, like, an errant DP from Sombra. It's going to sort of get caught, and then we're just going to tear the floor off the training mode stage. Let's see, though. Next okay. hit. Ooh, come here, grab Start. What you spending? Just making the setup. I like it. Yeah, and a roll catch as well with the far C. Oh, don't spend all of them. Spend it. I think you got no. I think you got uh, fine. Yeah. I, I think I wanted, I wanted a level two, but I, I think you had to hold at least a little bit of it. He's buffering. I mean, Reno is right now just Ooh. sitting there buffering. Saw the walk back. Gets there you go. Thank you, Reno. Ugh. Ask Pull the floor off Steve. Into the top tier. Dunk. Just planting geese. And send him swinging like it's Okto no Ken. The basketball combo incoming. Ah, so good. I love that. Uh, you see Reno buffering sitting there. And it's like, oh, you're not going to come to me, run up far B into win. And it's just like, whoop. This character's, you don't want to approach him, but then he just approaches you. I do love that you can, like, 
see the way that somebody spends a meter and it immediately affects their decision making, right? Like if they spent the meter there, then that far B is nowhere near as scary. Mm-hmm. But because they held the meter, it leaves them so uh, leaves themselves open to a array of different options. And that far B is the reason why they can get the kill. Oh my goodness. Round start, heavy burn knuckle. That's just Solver to try to try to make a statement, but Reno's statement is a little block. <laughs> to, to be fair, I think the punish and the hit would have done the same amount of damage. <laughs> short 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 flash kick is like a hundred is like a hundred damage. Meanwhile, the Terry, just a quick combo. Big jump of those spend meters. Those spend it. Yeah, I like that. Oh god. Oh. Two full jump looks like ashes and hurt. The first round. Yeah, I mean, turning that first game around like it was nothing. Terry goes, dispatches the Ash quickly in a healthy life lead the boot. So leave the pumps to me, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know I was encroaching on your. On your <laughs> no, I'm game. kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. I'm just making it. I'm bringing it to light. You might. You might not have recognized how clever you were being. So I want to give you your props. <laughs> All right, Hydern Gaming Help. has, uh, I mean, Terry, I mean, could turn this around decently well. It's just finding a raw jump in and making it work off is going to be a tall order, potentially, so we'll see. <laughs> Reno actually asking Sombra to run in on him. Not something you see from a character at a life deficit, but does have a healthy lead for the character versus character situation here. And definitely is the character that doesn't mind down backing away from the opponent. But you don't down back for so much, and the pressure is nice for Sombra. Oh just happy to just keep building bar and running the clock. It's like, hey, this works out for Terry. I'm only getting a little life back. That's fine. If I don't only get a smidgen of, of just a crumb. Sombra might be paying for playing a little too passively. I think if I'm Sombra, it's fine. I, I have a Terry up. It's like whatever, right? It's still the cash down, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Reno, I mean, sorry, because he just doesn't recover as much health. He's recovering like 100 health, I think. Something all incredibly minute. So now he's going versus this Sombra's Cho with three bars on his side. Almost anything is, means it's done and dusted. All right, jump CD. I like that. He's controlling the space here. All this bar, you know, just lets it rip. Oh, and then, yeah, the finger not good enough, but speaker not good enough. A little, oh. little tricky there. Oh, the problem here is that it can just lead to so much more after the Stormbringer. Nice trade. That's fine. That's fine. That actually worked out so much better for Sombra after that. Yeah, you don't mind that because obviously the above the 42 second mark, so recovering the full 300 possible. So you have the biggest life lead and still have all the meter that you had from before. So wonderful position for Sombra to be in. If you're MFM Sombra as well, I'm happy to spend guard cancels potentially. Yeah. It's a lot of big pressure here, and like those jump C's are gonna be kind of like uh, guard cancel fodder, guard uh, the blowback. Say, oh. if, if there's anything wrong with this character in Oyash, is that he has to get in. Doesn't really have anything to do on the opposite side of the screen. Joe's a great, great. Oh, oh wrong no. grab. Yeah. Almost had it. It's the rush grab, which is what's used in that position there. Sombra's in a one-hit scenario. If they can find a crouch B or even just a far D. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go. Spend it. Level three. Climax. Keep it simple. Oh, okay. my God. The confirms on this man. We don't even get a full like, special animation. My man just punches you and that's it. Underwhelming, but effective. Sombra ties things up one to one. That was fire. What a confirm. No, that wasn't fire. That was wind. Oh, my bad. All right, I'll <laughs> no, I got the kibosh put on me, so you have somebody else to keep it up. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I like kibosh, though. I'm, 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 I'm full, though, but I can go for some of that later. So great lead uh, given to Sombra from the point situation. Definitely spelled the name for both rounds here. How this point battle has gone. Very unique point battle. I mean, obviously we don't see yeah. Ash on, on this situation all that often. And a rare but, Terry, right? So it's just like, well, what do we expect? Yeah. Who knows? 
We're not gonna see Sam's claw, so I'm just gonna be Ash being uh, nice and honest. <laughs> as I say, as he does like 50% life. What? Nice. Huh? How did he do that? <laughs> <laughs> I was oh. talking about how little damage this character is. What is going on? <laughs> and then Frino said, hold my modello. Give me a second here. And that looked good. I mean, nice control again. I mean, Terry with the one bar. It could be huge if they can find it. Nice pullback from here. Yeah, with a life lead, right? It means that all of this control is so good for Reno. It's just going to chuck fireballs, spirits, just makes Umbra have to run into it, build us so much meter by just the nature of doing specials and the flash kick after all said and done, giving Reno a good lead with the Ash. Yeah, 100%. Just the control there was a match with. I mean, Terry, he, was, he, all he can really do is short hop, full jump, jump D, and hope that they got the timing right. So Reno not giving up too much there, the situation they have that. But we're gonna have that, Sombra not messing up these confirms. I love it. Dude. Why are these guys are so good at turning a little hit into something massive. Both players showing it off with both characters on your screen right now. Oh my god, just cross up after cross up. It's the same side though. Stormer just in a tough, tough situation. Had a good hit earlier on, but hasn't found that match yet. Can't get rid of that. One more. Oh. And in every bit, jumps over it. 30 second mark passing. Losing 150 health because they couldn't get that kill 15 seconds ago. And it's it's, its own form of damage, just letting the timer run out like that. Nice. I mean, we get the slidey. We get uh, Hydern in the business, but uh, this is exactly how we don't want to play this. Have a life lead, have bar, no problem, but has not really gotten the hits you want to see out of it. Haven't seen like the crouch sees and the four Bs. Oh, but he gets a jump over, gets a full combo, and Sayonara Joe. Yeah, good job. Great confirm that those uh, wall bounce combos in the corner can get kind of wonky see a lot of people even cut short their combos or just let it rock for a setup instead mm -hmm. but reno has it down going towards the anchor geese also fantastic position of him obviously you're seeing him a lot more point between the two big tournaments of recent but because of that control can play so well from this behind position can make it come back for your team quick palms bad spot here but reno finally put on the aggression actually Oh, what a backdash. Gets up a dodge, but still, a spot here. We know can get so much value from one straight hit. Sombra looking for that preferred range to try to approach. Ooh. Can't get anything off that one, unfortunately. That quick max just going away. And I don't mind that advanced strike, honestly. I try to want to just get rid of the meter. I should say, I don't mind, mind the meter spend. Just the advanced strike. There's so much recovery, easy punish for Reno. Oh, whoa! I don't know if that crossed up or not, but... Speaking of cross-ups, Reno just running away with it. And yeah. this is just, yeah, Sombra might be just beat down. And, okay, she pooped him. That's something. You get a little life back, but, I mean, you don't have, like, a thread, really, left to you at this point. Final round. Ready? Go! Yeah, so I'm really gonna need a miracle. Instead, oh no, right into Reno's loving arms. And uh, Reno making it to winner's finals. The the, the one jump where you think you're A-OK, -okay, you think it's fine, but no, I just the the, the way Oh Yashiro snatches you out of the sky. Yeah. I never get tired of that. That man is just like yoink. Like 17 to like 20 mm. characters of like consistent tournament characters, like K Dash and Kyo are in that. In this version of the game, I think they're in that character specialist. If like it's sort of like Luong and like Duelon, where it's like if you character specialist these characters, now they're good enough to face the top tiers, right? You All just right. have to put a little bit more time into them. Well, let's see what we can do here with that point kill versus the Benamaru former teammates. Always battling it out, so it's fun to see. Is Boom keep burning the corner here? I mean, but again, they, they're confident, they're commit, they commit, and they make their hits count. 
people are ready for that same side mix up that time though. And uh kinda just both players getting little hits left and right. Whoa. Oh, I don't know which side that hit on. <laughs> oh god, combo for Kula though. Shoves Boom Jeep into the corner, gonna spend the meter to make sure we are finishing this round healthy, nice and strong. I mean, that was just a master class. But tomorrow we get one crossed up and then it's just running the character over. So keep now with the K-Dash. But it's gonna, I think it's always tough, neutral wise. It, most characters just won't, don't have what it takes to combat Benamaru when yeah. it comes to like the far B being like the stop sign, DP being really strong, and then those like, top three jump ins. Cool. Yeah, I mean, he is finding his way in with these jump seats time and time again. Another character that has an incredible normal set. One of the reasons why this character is so good. I don't know, but Mars gonna be that mirror mask. Boom Cube really needs to figure. Gotta get something going, right? It's cool. Yeah. Has just been keeping everything compact, clean, and effective. Boom Cube finding a hit, get something going here, but um, how do you follow that up? Nice attempt, but didn't work out. I tried to go for something tricky there, rolling out of the way. But Boom Cube finding these hits versus cool as Benny quite often now. Benny Meter trying to hit this Benny Maru down on the side of Kula. For the air throw in this situation just got meant with the jump seat and gonna spend the meter to make sure we finish it off did it quite safely from that position as well using the max yeah expensive but i mean that's momentum that's something it gets going but hydern interesting thing here is cool already on the offense and i kind of like that right you have a two character lead you have plenty of bar you can just start going aggro run under as a punish too we're activating just to make sure we get like the standard combo, but it's worth it. I think Boom Cube just tried to do that air fireball just to kind of like mix up the timing he was going to fall and hopefully throw a cool off guard, but was ready for it. It's also too like Kyder's got one of the fastest run speeds in the game. I mean, yes. He is like, he's a zoner, but he be just lost his long gangster's legs. Combo, Boom Cube, a little something something, but a lot more than that. Two more great hits. Too far for the crouch be your C unfortunate. Yeah, he's gonna go for the knockdown that situation. Does it one more time. Yeah, quite safe thing to do in that situation there. Needs to be blown up and uh that's uh look, taking the first game there. Yeah. What can you say? I mean Betamaru was on display. I mean, for both sides. <laughs> yeah, like the marquee actually. character. It's just yeah, having that lead that Kula did, no problem closing out and uh Double advancing strike. This is a call out saying, yeah, I know you want to press. I know you want to get something started here. So take advantage of that and uh, goes up a game. Yeah, it's um, kind of a tough situation that Boom Cube got put himself into. Just letting that Benny Mara run wild. But obviously, but gives him an obvious game plan for game two. Right. Just let, let's let's try to dispatch this Benny Mario as quickly as possible. We can negate even if we can negate some of the damage that happened from last time we'll be in a better position I wasn't able to confirm off that cd unfortunately and you're just seeing the control yeah this is the Metamar special he is denying everything jump jump c is just the money maker jump c and jump b you don't, you can rotate them right they'll do yeah. both do the job and then there's a double overhead into the drill and boom you fall and the kyo just can't get nothing going and uh yeah, that's cooler. Yeah, I mean, this character is just... I, I'm really getting to show how good this character is in terms of controlling. You think like, oh, this character's got stubby buttons. You know, his specials kind of take up a lot of time. Oh, I wasn't able to get the punish there, unfortunately. But it is really about how good that normal set is and what it does. Every button covers like multiple things because of its speed, its hitbox, its range, one thing or another. Oh, wait. Boom cube. There we go. I love that come from the run up after on the EX trigger. Just being able to get that combo there. And that was good. Controls on the other hand as Boom cube finds an answer with the K dash. And this is probably the best spot. He's been in all set. Not with a lead yet, but has every tool they need the range of that. And then all of you are spent, unfortunately. 
Yeah, this is a this is a position that you can fight back from. Way more reasonable than the previous game. Spent on the guard roll. Doesn't lead into anything afterwards, unfortunately. Oh, his meter spent again. The second EX, I just get stuffed. Operating at like no bar. Cool is just throwing anything out and hoping it sticks. Doesn't have a lot of meter to make that hurt hurt. Kula probably feeling comfortable with that shatter strike, knowing that. And just the control from the Hydra. No combos, just a bunch of little hits over the course of the entire round, keeping the K Dash out and throwing Boom Cube on his Benny Mara. Kula just well versed in the ABCs. Talked about that at uh, Texas Showdown, you know? Yeah, we did. Oh, and then, yeah, I'm okay. Hyder is just more than happy to jump back in the corner. There's no problem here. Like, there's, there's this man is happy to be any anywhere in the screen, defense or offense. Cool is just happy to whiff because he knows if you run into any of those, you're going the meat grinder. Yeah, I mean, because of how good this character's mix up game is after Stormbringer, we've kind of seen him more of an offensive playstyle in 15 and kind of forget that, you know, this character used to be the, the zoner extraordinaire. Fireball. You know, flash kick, just buttons in front of you. Oh, let's go. Slips in that jump B. Felt like it came out of nowhere. That's the right time to use it then. Boom Cube on the anchor war now. Yeah, this is a, it's the Rio. This is the first time Rio is on display on the stream as Boom Cube finally brings out Senor Karate himself. And there's that damage to kick things off. You know, one more of those will do it. All right, one more. One more for realsies this time. Can get down to that 100 with chip though, which is a good situation to be in. And not a lot of bar on the side of the cube and the trade in the air, obviously in Kula's favor, gonna be able to take it two to zero over Boom Cube. Yeah, there we go, nicely done. Kula once more, just taking advantage of saying like, hold that out like it was always had that thing on you the whole time. It's not TNS. <laughs> it's it couldn't be a, K a North American KOF tournament with Iori showing up at least once on stream. All right, this character is the staple, of the mainstay. He's the man with the plan, and uh, is a treat to watch. Yeah, and uh, I really like watching Iori in this version of the game too, because he just feels like a, a kind of an expert character. Everybody plays Iori a little bit, but the players who stick with him when he's not, you know, the toppest tier, those are the players you should really be afraid of. I know, D double geese, both dressed to the nines and just dishing it out. It's one early lead, final Rapukin. That's yeah, that's a great spot to be in right here. Oh, yeah, healthy spot. Playing that control game. Juan not overreaching, understands that he has the corner positioning, and just doing the little hits, the little things that it needs to take the rounds. Yeah, well done. All right. Juan with a quick one. He's gonna bring out the, the, the sun. Rock Howard already in the corner, though. Dad is putting him in timeout. This is a tough spot to start things off in. Yeah, for sure. He's gonna bust out, get some room behind him. Nice block. And yeah, backing up, trying to play in that range. Use that jump CD, one of Rock's best tools. Okay, there we go. Big flippy. Gonna cut damage stick, and that's a pretty good spot here, but now how do you close out? That's just how many palm strikes. Oh no! Cashing this damage in. We're going to the corner. Gonna spend a little more? No, doesn't want to use the X. Just wants to wait for another palm to finish it. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I love the idea of, or love the, the the decision, I should say, not to go for the grab there. Just saving meter, has the positioning, and it wasn't gonna kill anyway. All right, oh. down to Mr. Yagami here. Two bar to the point, he's getting DP'd, not dead yet, but the purple stuff does it. There we go, oof, spicy. Fernandez left on the Iori character, but he's put on point for a reason. However, the issue here, the Rio, dispatched you in a moment, gets the opportunity. It's up to Fernandez not to give him that. Even 
sneaking in some scum gills in there. And keeping it quite healthy on the meter usage here. Very nice from Hernandez. It gets the job done exactly like Yori needed to do. I was very surprised that I didn't see the level two sparklers there because normally you see all the meters spent immediately to blow it up. But Fernandez, knowing that it's a marathon, not a sprint, is serving meter on the way there. Oh, this is a tough spot for Juan this time. Has just the Iori Assault and gets a 2B activation. That was ridiculous. Oh. Double super. Okay. He's going to use DX to finally EX there. Reset. Throw. Juan. Five bar. A miracle is in the making. This is the cross up, but the pressure is still there. Fernandez, though, gets tagged. Not bagged. The jump in. The crotch B gets the hit. Gonna spend everything. Short still. Give him the kick. But yeah. Close him on. Not good enough. The wake up. Proceed. And then the chip out. The actual KOF chip out. I haven't seen that man in years. Chip out and KOF went for smokes and hadn't come back. But today is the day. Today is the day for a chip out finish. I wonder if he dialed in the like like a, a motion afterwards and because of the trade it just came out afterwards like he just like just mashed like forward c into a special and then it was like whatever happens happens i'm just so impressed with that wake up c just doing the job and then like made this weird situation there. Fernandez is all in on Iori. That's crazy. I love it. Making that full reverse OCV. And now in control. Their goose is loose, and this is that damage and that control that you expect out of Heath. But you know, it's a mirror match, so Juan has the opportunity to do it too, get the throw, and what can, what can they make here? Ooh. Oh, guard bar, yeah. Has to roll out in order to avoid the guard break. Taking advantage of having this better corner positioning. Full jump D, though. Showing off the, the differences in jumps can definitely be the difference in winning or losing a round. Juan KOF spending two on top of which to get rid of that geese. So going into this next one, no meter. All right. He's mines too much. Oh, this is a good for Fernandez. Another cork, another big combo. Has resources, gonna not spend level one yet. Another hit can do it here, no problem. Just has to find a way and find the right jumps to match uh, Juan, who just jumps E forward. And then gets a big, 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 big jump and blocks a DP. Rising tackle, not rising. Nothing here is, oh boy, spot. Love him also getting the jump ins on top of that. Fully understanding what the the max damage you can get out of a situation is for a block DP, and uh, that kind of expertise squeezing the squeezing the juice out of the rock just a little bit more. Juan KOF it looks up for him at the beginning, but we're in the same position we were in game one. That being do it said, again. Can't yeah. do it again. Run it back. Oh my god, that's twice. I can't believe it. Jump City counter hit and then the sweep. Doing something worthwhile instead of losing a person a game. So, honestly, Geese's job is done though, just like game one. It is, I would say, that's the Rio for a little bit more. But this is looking quite familiar. This is looking quite familiar, folks. That damage. Set him out of here. Spend the extra bar to make just to put him in a body bag. Okay. Saying the the reservation to use that extra meter, feeling like that getting that extra hit is not a problem for Fernandez. That's the confidence in the player saying, I don't need to spend the extra meter to get the kill. I'm gonna conserve it for something better later on because I know I could do it again. I was a smidge worried, just a little bit. You never know. But Fernandez is back in it to win it. Has the Iori versus the East left one though. Four bars, pressure's on. Guard bar's cranking. And I mean, this man is cranking all over the places. It'll be a PT stream. Let's get this out of here. Okay, pick it through. Scary position to be oh, in. No. Yeah. This is where you catch up and finish it. Okay. 
Level two, level level two, level two. What a character. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? How many characters have access to double level two? Oh man, that's nuts. Great stuff. Cleans it up. Yeah, tough situation to be in in there for Fernandez. Uh, the guard bar being cranked so hard meant he felt like he had to make a decision. And I don't know if Juan knows that knows these, but because it's kind of like a, a minutia sort of level thing. But mm -hmm. at that low of guard bar, you can definitely do stuff to to like on max mode to crank the guard bar harder. Yeah, like like mm -hmm. do like you know C max mode C special and then get the guard break and then you would have killed anyway. You don't see it all that often, even when the possibility arises, but definitely I know these players have done it before, if not in this game in a previous one. You know, there, there are, yeah, there, there is that guard pressure. Oh, what a counter. Fernandez. Oh, the double jump. I love it. The faint short hop until the full jump. The counter gets punished. A quick just, uh, quick plant. And this is Fernandez's first time winning the point war. This is the first time a character went down and it wasn't Yori doing it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And and Fernandez has looked so good, even from such a large deficit, that this could be quite scary for Juan K. Web. Well, there's some jumps, there's some pressure, but I mean, Rio has just been in jail. I think he legally parked his bike for too long or whatever, and they just like set him back, and he has not just been able to get anything going at all this entire set. He's actually been in this corner for legitimately the entire game. He has never left this left side and has never been able to put even an iota of damage on Fernandez, being able to recover everything that he's done time and time again. And now Fernandez showing Juan what it looks like to play geese on point and have it run for almost a whole OCV. But let's well. see. Can, can Juan do the same thing as Fernandez in the first game? Gotta make a miracle here. Gets the trade. It's still skilled because it is the CD, but it's still damage. And you gotta make it quick to get as much life back as possible, but uh oh. Okay. It's spicy here. Oh. Nice faint. You think she's dipping, but nope. Comes right back around like a boomerang. And Juan. All right, here we go again. Except the shoe is on the other hand. I'm just saying something. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're all right. I mean, we're in for quite an interesting one. You don't usually see the seesaw swing from point and anchor. So. Ooh. I mean, Rock has like, every time we've seen Rock, it's been one like big combo, but not, that's been about it. So let's see what Fernandez can do. Can get one big hit and do more from it, or if he's going to finish the job. Yeah, I've done a little bit more than Rio, but I think if you're Fernandez, you would ask your Rock to do a little bit more. Knocked down in the corner. Hit, hit by the CD. I love that. Jump D just to make the faint and add more pressure. You don't want to press when she's like jumping on you like that with the special. Ooh, wait a minute. Ow. Ow. We just did it in the block stream? <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Juan came up able to find the hit afterwards, though. And uh, not going to recover a lot of life because of that combo. 26 seconds, only 150 health recovered, not a lot of meter left. Two bars is more than enough for an almost full life character for Yori. I feel like, I feel like Project Activation in the future here. If Fernandez is ready for it, put the chase down. Hold on. Okay, we're in a scary position now. We're in a scary position now, folks. Oh, blocks the empty low. Oh, here we go. Anyone's game? No scum game for you! He jumps away from it! Oh my god! Oh, that's all of you spent. That's the low, what do you know? And Fernandez with the quick cross-up confirm takes a set 2-1 to one over Juan KOF and a huge nail-biter. Exact it meant, so I just wanted to be sure, alright? So I'm helping everyone else out. <laughs> Making me sound real pretentious over here. <laughs> Stop making me Google. Work. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, after after the vocab lesson, we got the game coming up there. Yuri Kov versus Sombra. Back on the Might and Coon, showing off the Blue Mary as well this time. 
Yeah, they're standard team here for your right? Yeah. Loves to hold it down team. with the control. Holds plenty of charge here with the the, the might and coon. You see a lot of rope grabs on a lot of those. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what? We can pull C out. Plus frames? All the plus frames. That guard bar, you know what? ABCs, baby. Doing it, doing it big. Ooh, card canceled the fireball. Trying to get underneath Yuriko for a punish. Oh, we're oh, a little bit too far. Nice. Can't press in buttons. But then, of course, Sombra not getting with the picture. This is a guy. This is a character that's holding down back. After that certain, after the right amount of time, is ready to blow up any jump, and Hirokov is always ready to rip, let it rip. So yeah, th Terry didn't get as much done as I think Sombra would like, but this is, I think, a matchup that Sombra will be quite happy with. So try to whiff punish max mode. But Recovery? What's that? Yeah, unfortunate. So, Mayan Kun does not know the meaning of that word. And it's definitely, yeah, dictionary's not even gonna help there. I don't think, uh, I don't think words have been, uh, an important factor for Mayan Kun. Let's say. Yeah, he knows two things. Uh, sleep. And charge. I guess charge, I don't know. What did I want to be? I just know he knows sleep, and it's so effective. Sleeping's kind of like charging. Recharging, yeah. Yeah. I like it. I pick up on things too. There you go. You're just down backing like at night. Hell for yeah. for tomorrow, so you can flash kick tomorrow's day. Yeah, and then you wake up, and then you're up there, and then there's the run charge. As Yurikov again, full control. As Mighty Kun, it's the character adds a wrinkle into how you gotta fight. You can't just play your kind of traditional KOF. You can't just rely on just hopping around to be your main source of movement. And you feel like you have to because the character has so much like good tools yeah. on the ground with like great projectiles, a great crowd, a great sweep, and all the other things that are a part of this kit that you really like. This is the time. He's going to go for a sweep. He's going to throw a bad pillow and then you just like lose a quarter of your life for trying to jump. Nice. With cancel in order to get that OTG throw. But throws him out of the corner. Ooh, one more. Oh, the back dash, no good. So I'm just pre pressing in every situation. That they feel like they can get their turn. And Yurikov is taking advantage of it by just getting their leads. And, uh, Anchor Geese, ooh, should have V8. I had to spend the meter for it, but... We'll be comfortable, and this is, like I said before, you know, you don't mind spending meter at any given point when you're playing Anchor Geese because this character is almost designed to operate without it. So <laughs> anything afterwards is a, is a little bit of an extra benefit. The problem here is that Yurikov is on the Isla with four bars, so cannot make any mistakes anymore. Yeah, tough spot here. I mean, that is always, I mean, this, this is the premier mix-up character. I'm keeping it simple with the cross-up. Sayonara, Geese Howard, and we're going to game two. Yeah, I got put in a pretty tough situation. The Geese almost been able to make the comeback, but you're that low on life and the opponent has that many ways to kill you. It's quite difficult for you to find that sort of opportunity to get your offense started, especially versus a player like Yurikov, who is pretty defensive minded. Yeah, that was stellar. I mean, Stellar all the way through, right? Did the damage they needed to do, and then just having that meter, and they could just force it. Uh, and again, that's if Yurikov plays at their own, like, a very unique tempo. And uh, it's on the opponent to kind of figure it out and match it. So let's see what Sombra does here, if they're more wary of the Might and Kun, giving up damage for trying to just hop around, jump around. Round one. Ready? Go. All right, for a knuckle round start. Save pressure here. As Sobras just trying to stay grounded, but again, Yurikov's charge is doing, doing really good. Again, it's 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 annoying, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a it's a you know it's an anti air reversal, right? So you're like, Ooh. oh, okay, Ooh. very nice. Yeah, that's the threat with this character. You know, this character doesn't have a low. But if you think about that threat, I mean, he has a low, just not a very good one in, in, as a point character. Uh, but if you think about it in the sense like he has a different kind of threat, 
Oh my god. <laughs> um, interesting, and then just gets tech. Try to counter out. Uh, that time, Sombra just gets staying grounded. Just uh, my game plan is CD into Burn Knuckle, and I'm just gonna rinse repeat. Uh, I like that. Simplify. Find a different thread and present a problem that Yurikon wasn't ready for. Nice reaction on the, burn, or on the tackle. Meaty, nice TP, denying it, and uh, Yurikon getting something going. Oof, alright. Finally mixed it in those command grabs into the situation. Jump B, jump B. Nice Pokemon. Look. Same side cross up. KOS specialty. But Yurikon's been there, done that. Flying that jump CD, or sorry, a stand CD, is so good because it does have a little bit of a jump in it. So it can blow up a lot of. a lot of lows. And, uh. Great stuff, dispatching the Terry, getting rid of the character who's been really good in this second game. Going to the Joe. Defense of Starfree or Kabiri Cobb. Okay, let's put some meter on this one. Was that full? So might as well. Ooh. And it tags the, the, the stance. Yurikov trying to dodge out and uh, gonna take a lot of damage here. Not a bad spot for Sombra who can, you know, Finish off Mary, no problem. Gets the throw back in the corner. I like that decision. Imagine we're actually hitting. That's impressive. Just needs a last Ooh. hit right there. Yeah, and Yurikov looking for that opening. Sombra gets around it. Pretty good no. spot here. Absolutely. I mean, full control. Did a really good job of just picking those spots. Getting those little hits in. And now it's, uh, it is Isla. Great movement, great pressure, great buttons. Everything you ever want. And... Even like, uh, again, you think it's like a jump beat, but it's not. It's just it's such a good cross of it. it has so much hit on it. Do it again. Uh, Continuous safe pressure. That's why the character's so good. The combo itself loops itself into really, really strong offense, but it's not done yet. Not for the Joe, at least. Be able to put some damage down before he's gone. If he's gone, two bars in the corner here. If he finds one more hit, he's nice. able to get yeah, that cross. Yurikov just said, Hey, the best way out, right? Full jump forward, put a big old hitbox in the back end of that, and we're leaving. And uh, three bar geese can clean this up with a single good hit here at this point. Yeah. Oh, what a break. Stop though. Baiting counter out, yep, denying it. Closely hitting on the back end. Sure. Oh, oh he didn't hit me, that would've been sick. Oh no. Alright, we're in a bad position now. He wants to spend more on this. No, he's just gonna hold on it because it wasn't gonna kill anyway. Keep the the utility here. Pressure is big, guard bar is cruising down. Come once out. Boom, no punish, that's it. Great, Great information. I love it. That was so perfect. Again, just recognizing Yurikov wants out. Wants out of dodge. Wants no part of fighting geese in the mid screen. So just put in their escape or their attempts to got tagged by that far C, which is, you know, it's a, a button that like is good in its own merits. Might not be like, it's not a defining button for geese. But it just has the speed and range to it. Oh, yeah. That catches you like that. So that was really, really, really well, well, well placed. It's a stop sign, right? Like, it's just a, you cannot go further than this. So it's quite often a, a really good button to use in those maximum situations. You just don't see it all that often because geese on anchor, although not bad, uh, not common, at least not at this point in the patch. Mm -hmm. So... But, you know, uh, Sombra showing it off really nice. Love seeing how different characters change with different amounts of meter. You know, just getting access to different tools, different amounts of risk and reward. Yeah, and then a the different amount of defense you have access to as well, right? Yeah. How well can players play without, like, a guard cancel blowback? How well can they just, uh, you know, what are, they, what are they willing to do when they have bar? Oop, jump. And then just a CD to add more pressure, but... Uh, Good on your cough until. Oop, no, didn't time it right. Three damage. Oh, actually going for the full cross up on that one. 
good position to be in not only because of the life lead but getting sombra's terry in the corner being able to fight out there with some bird <laughs> knuckles i'm telling you man. oh the rising tackle on the roll four are you kidding me i'm telling sombra you. i love you you're so oh, fun hard bar here. hard bar oh you're no dead. he's dead i just I'm like telling you oh this my character God. i'm telling you it's not just because this character doesn't have a low, it doesn't mean he's not any less scary. It's just, you have that guard bar to worry about now instead of your feet. I just love seeing Terry just like, it's just looping the same pressure and you're doing the same thing. And it's just like, this, this, what did it say, right? It's just, uh, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, <laughs> expecting different results. Oh. Now he's in a really good position. Rolling oh, away, yeah. looking for something. <laughs> oh my god, that could have been a lot there. Finally, far C. Can't remove Terry out of the equation yet, but oh, I love it. <laughs> oh no, the confidence. So we're here. feeling it. We're feeling good. It's putting the, the, the dusk is coming early for Yurikov here as their last character in the Isla has to just make this count for with punishing Isla CD. Are you kidding me? Oof. And then Yurikov full sends it, say, I, you're not the only one that can risk the DP and get the finish, but oh my goodness. Dude. Now or never. Ready? <laughs> Sent him out with a warning too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just... Don't be whipping buttons in this range. I got other characters who can make the most of it. They're coming up next. Okay. All right. Oh, that time they didn't jump, but I like uh, Yurikov. Just waiting. Patient. And then, yeah. You know, this character looking split, and this is competitive match again. No problem. Yeah. Definitely the biggest issue here is the, the meter deficit, obviously, on the side of Yurikov, because character just de it definitely needs at least a bar to get that offense started and on the side of five means you're basically one hit away from just eating any combo into death oh now this is your cover the lead though so, got a good spot oh we got the 4d count and activation to the same side setup your cup not falling for it though at the end there far c didn't activate on the phone oh that trade so even here, he's gonna run. Oh no. Watch out. We're in a bad position. One more hit. No good. No great, actually, but you can't kill. Go oh, from that far. That's so that's so good for your cop. And the worst possible thing. The power of like the slow reversal. But going downtown, you thought that was a safe repoot. Really is the guard bar. Like, that is a, another thing to worry about on the character, unlike a lot of other characters. Because of his safe specials and because they're so hard to deal with, the whole situation of him doing, like, let's say a jump in and then close C into, you know, canceling into a special, just, like, cranks so much bar that it's almost always the next thing to worry about afterwards and something he can play for happy that sombra got to show it off but yuri Kov will be moving on and now here we go reno versus kula yashiro hyder oh yashiro the the reno squad we've come to know and love mostly hyder though is a far you know is is saying like ash i'm sorry but hyder is just the master of holding down back the more value you get from it without having to require like you know, three bars, right? There's a super, yeah. gonna get OTG. And pretty close here between these two. Take things off. Oh wow. Advanced strike of all things in that situation. Maybe just looking to reset plus frames. I'm not quite sure, honestly. It could have just blown through any poke as well while staying safe, but Kula gets away from it. And uh, I would suggest not letting his Benny Mario get started. We'll see though. You know, having that the range and the air normals to contest now really well with Hyder. Happy to just kind of sit back, take their time. In the corner though, tough spot. What a throw! Threw him out of the EX corridor. That's a that feels bad. Yeah. If you were Kula, you had like the a, a not a bad read, but like some of these throws aren't one frame. So you just see the the 
or either the range was just just a little bit wrong going to the mirror now Kula with a little bit of more health or sorry more meter i should say but not too much not nothing to worry about uh, i mean not if you're just gonna spend all of it on ex moon slashers <laughs> not if we're both gonna spend it on ex moon slashers <laughs> Who can anti-air better than the opponent? Who, who, who's more on, on the ball? Oh, oh no. there we go. Great guard roll. Going to get an actual punish here. It's not going to lead to a lot of damage, but it definitely led to a setup that we don't have to worry about. Fourth. Oh, EX gets canceled. Maybe try to go for EX uh, Stormbringer, which you can like vacuum. It's done right. Big trade. Lead is all in Kula's favor here. Now Kula is just happy to chill. Ooh. Slash again. No problem here in one touch. And again, the roll. Knowing every time. And it's just like, recognize it like, yeah, you could not end a guard trick with that, right? It's so easy as Hydra to not go for that at all, right? There's no really like right. opportunities when you're trying to aggress that you'll be able to do it. But then, you know, Kula just recognizing it's happening. I know what's happening, and it's just I can't describe, can't uh, shortchange them and their decisions because it's just ridiculous how well ready they are. <laughs> Stuck in that command grab, throwing Kula into the corner and just constantly spending on these EX Moon Slashers. Doesn't mind this. They, they, I believe Kula feels like they have so much control over the situation. So as long as they have an EX Moon Slasher, and they are doing damage by the nature of just time, lowering just every little bit that they run into. Oh my, oh my God, God! Again, just like just knowing is is three reads ahead at all times. Kula just denying Reno anything that he wants. Like a kid at the candy store, except you know it's way it's you know haven't had your dinner yet. You're gonna spoil yourself. There is nothing you can have here. We're just here to get something for later. And Cool's gonna send Oyash packing with the command grab, taking game one. With punish on the two C with a run up Stormbringer. Just expert play there versus the Oyash. Let him get nothing started the entire time. Just the confidence to be able to spend on having your second character use all of your EX meter, leaving nothing for your anchor. But it's not going to matter if the opponent never gets the hit. Yeah, super, just super good. I mean, cool is, again, it's just a testament to all of the time and, de you know, over a few decades playing King of Fighters, multiple King of Fighters. You talk about experience, intuition, everything there. Cool is just like one of those most like kind of players that just has every little thing going for them, right? And they also just play great characters. So it's just that beautiful combination of just, and, of, and it's like a, a very refined and I'd say one of the perfect examples of Mexican style KOL. Yeah, absolutely. Now in the corner here, Reno is going to have a lot of control between the 2D, the fireball, far D, CD, all of these things, the jump C on top of which, just all of these tools, but great. Oh, I was about to say, Reno finally fights out of the corner, but Kula says, no, 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 no. Back here where you belong. Okay. DP. Oh, that charge. Actually, got the damage. And then the oh. punish. Oh, what a, I mean, easy, easy punish. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Set up a little frame trap, but Kula, again, they're always uh, one step ahead. Or two steps in this case. Oh, Even the fire EX messed up the wall back out. That was, I love it. That's, I mean, it doesn't I've never matter, seen that bro. before. That's so funny. That was, that was, mwah, chef's kiss. I just, all these little interactions just make me happy. <laughs> Taylor's so cool, man. Like, it's not Street Fighter. When a, a firewall leaves the screen, it is still there. It still hangs out in KOF until it's all the way gone, so. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Reno gets another big hit. Finally, the first real lead in this set so far. Oh, and then the safe jump too. They don't want to go for the cross up and bring in the storm, getting 
all that life back with the hood perfect. And, and that's a hide and run if I ever saw one. We'll be quite happy with that one now. A rare enjoy snipe. This. <laughs> a yeah, rare snipe for us right now. Kula has to go on the Rio. I don't know how many people I've put him on this character. God. Yet. Oh my god. There, there's no interaction that Kula's not ready for. Ugh. There's just this, this hyper awareness that is only prevalent in a player of this caliber. And you know, like, oh, why don't I see Kula winning all these big events? So, it's hard out here. Nice combo for Reno, though. Good back. A little bit of life back. Has to be careful, has to do a safe jump. Can't go anything green. Yeah, it keeps it nice and simple here. Golkin. Nice. A lot of recovery on that. And yeah, finds the chip out. And Kula. I mean, it's Rio. This is a big thumb man. It's a dangerous opponent who can explode at a moment's notice. Ready? Not a bad position for Reno, though. You are literally two combos away from killing <laughs> Kula. Two jump ins <laughs> with Oyas can spell a disaster for the opponent. Going to that 2C. Fantastic anti air. Oh, no! yeah. I dig it. Going two? Yeah, make it count. Send them out. You know, doing their best to get to a uh, game one to one, and that'll do. Nice, just. Easy confirm, taking advantage of the whiff uppercut. And set out and Oyashiro. Give him a chance, so do that big damage you hope for. And again, against like Ryo, you don't wanna like you wanna keep it safe and simple. One of the best characters to go for like cross cut DPs or blow up like missed time jumps. Yeah. So uh Reno just keeping it tight, doing a good job. Definitely gets uh got a lot of value of having uh, a really strong life lead. Ready? Given to him by the Hydrant in really, really strong play. Then Oyash put on anchor in a lot of teams because he just doesn't need much in order to do huge damage. A bar is enough to take half your life. But that, that point war definitely down to the wire in the second game. And both players will be fighting a little bit harder here to maybe gain a lead early on. Arming into the super here. OTG. Set up. Save, more safe pressure, but Kula busts out. Starting to get a little, just a little, not, I don't like to say antsy, but take a little bit more of a regular risk as opposed to like the calculated kind. But and now they just kind of bring this back around, but Reno again, just happy to walk it back. Ooh, haven't seen that one in a while. That's the Yashiro classic of mashing 2C in people's block strings. A lot of hits done to get that nice confirm. Ready? And Kula is now put on the Hydrant with a pretty decent life lead here for Reno. My armored DP. I love that. Just an armored uppercut. It's so cool. It's so unique. It's so KOM. Block. Pressure. All right. Reno's warmed up. Looking a little more uh, wear ready here. Let's see what Kula can do. Though. They, got, they got plenty of bar and they're ready to like snipe these jumps. And they'll, they'll take these trades, which actually works out pretty well. And again, ABC, maybe always be charging. Just overall super strong. I mean, to answer that back, but this is where it exploded last game. The the Hydra and Mirror match. Like, yeah. You know, found, found money and made it count. They had 20 bucks on the floor and said, yes, please. I ain't finding who this belongs to. It's mine now. Definitely could be really volatile if they can get one hit. Kula spending on the guard roll looking for that first opening. But we saw in game one, also content in just spending meter on utility. Ooh. Let's see how that plays out. Activate there. Interesting. Just happy to get the wheel. Gets a little bit of damage and life back. But this is a full bar meter now. I imagine a guard cancel at some point. No. Try to get something probably as soon as the aggression comes up. Kula, we'll see. Surprised to see Kula go for something safe there. Could have gone for some even a safe jump if they didn't want to go for the mix, but like incredibly safe there, just going for a mini fireball after the Stormbringer. Nice perfect anti air. Now one touch here from Kula and with the crossover. Really well done. Just control again. Masterclass and just I have the room to work with. I know how to I, you can't just freely jump at me, so you have to find a way to navigate around this, and it's just like cool. No problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> a 
unexpected. That's why it worked out. I'm gonna spend a bar on it. I'm gonna get this wonderful setup from the corner here, but Kula's got one for every character on Reno's team. Not close enough for the command grab. That sucks. Wanted the punish. Right, what do you do here? It's sweet. Man, oh, this, we saw that in game number one as Kula is just ready for these command grab setups sometimes. He's able to avoid it, but just get snatched. I love that. That advancing command grab, you want to hold down back fine. And if you try to go for the, the moon slash, high chance you just get grabbed out of it. Nice little stagger pressure there. Doing a close A walk up, close A. Getting the last opening needed. And then four bars on Oyash, which is two more than he needs. But he won't, he'll take the other two for utility and other reasons. Oh, betrayed. Oh, that hurts. I see it. I see the future. The future is bright here for Big Red Karateka. And that should do. Nice and simple. Cool. Able to take game two. I mean, it's a fun character, too, because I like it. Because it's like, you want to crouch C, then okay, let's do it. Yeah. And Rio's got like one of the fastest crouch Cs. Not a lot of range on it, but the speed is so incredible. That like oh, being up close to him and like leaving a gap there just means that crouch C into forward A, forward B, or forward A is gonna just be in your future, and that just means an easy, easy ex uh, senpyu kyok, and it's just a, uh, you know, like Rio's buttons are like not as straightforward as you think in some ways, like his, his far buttons all work on crouchers, so it relies on like you know, really picking and choosing the right ones for situations. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, that his two C's four frames, so it's just incredible for not needing to specifically DP people out of jump ins and stuff like that. You're quite often going to beat the opponent out of their hops and jump on top of which it just like reaches to the sky. So, phenomenal pressure or anti pressure tool there. Reno gets a hit here. And knocked Ooh, out nice. Rozo into the corner. Great roll catch as well with the far C. Reno takes the lead here. It's Haymakers. That is, that is classic Yashiro. Launch Yashiro just throwing out the big swings and just keeping that pressure safe. It's nice to see. Go back to your roots. Nice. Again, punish on that. A lot of recovery on the on the slash. That fireball just tricky stuff to use. Cooler now. Kind of scrambling to figure out how they can get around this. To start, keep him in the Keeps corner, corner. Too very smart. Ooh, tried to go for a sneaky frame trap setup with the uh, shatter strike, or should say, you know, just the ah! anti button. But meter goes by the wayside here. Both players back to your corners in neutral. Go. <laughs> the round's not over yet. Run up, grab. Need one more of those. Watch out too, because yeah. Have the bar, will travel. One of the, uh, always been like able to go through fireballs and get a little bounce for extra credit. So Reno ready. Such a good tool to use against such a, a fireball, such low, uh, such high recovery as Hydra's. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why you don't see the character, like out of all the things the character has, is fireball is still good because it's huge. Mm -hmm. But it's not kind of the way that the people like people don't like fireball flash kick as often as cool is showing, you know, it's yeah. just way more of an aggressive character in this version of the game. Yeah, I don't know. I 100 percent agree. So I Reno just kind of playing that patience. Best to be careful here because we saw, yeah, the parry into the EX and Q-Cock work so well. We saw these well time jumps. But we know more happy. To, ooh, never mind. There's a parry again. What a response. That's how much recovery that fireball has, by the way. It's, it is actually insane. All the control that a character like Rio has with that fireball. <laughs> you can play about 50% of the screen away from you and still make you threaten your life. Add a little bit of the crop. See any of the hit. Big blocks, go away, nice. Some other space that you don't ever want, and that should be able to be a huge damage here. Can't kill, but it's gonna set up the next touch to finish the job. Ridiculous. Yep. Very difficult to read what side you're going to be on. To be honest, sometimes when I do that, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> well, I, I understand, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but. 
doesn't matter because it's the opponent has to be the one who deals with it. And we tie it up. Yeah, and now here we go. Game number five here. Such a fun set, and both players are starting to have to like change up kind of their game plan and really be more, be a little more not I won't say cautious, but just can't fully commit to their style. And it's just been so much fun to watch. It's cool to have it. Okay, there's answers for me, so I gotta like t either tighten it up or uh, take away those big reads and take rely more on reactions. Hard to say, but so far early lead is cool. Finding little hits. Yeah, this, I feel like this Yashiro has gotten better and better as we've gone along. It's felt a little bit more and more comfortable and gotten more reward out of these games. Definitely a, a point here for Kula. Not getting the lead with the Benny. Yeah, we would on like the crowd seat. I like that Kula took advantage of it. Find something with the slash, a lot of recovery on that. We're spending meter, we're getting our damage here with the hard knockdown to the safe jump, yeah. Oh. I think he's advanced breaks in. Nope. Oh. OTG. Set up. And yep. nicely done. One more time. As Rio just, yeah. More just safe jump, reliable pressure. Cooler cracks, and that first character goes down in our final game. Game coming back. Yeah, I love simple stuff like that, especially when you have a lead and it's on the onus of your opponent to make a mistake. Or make the make the correct read, I should say. Then easy for them enough to make a mistake and get to punish. Okay, jump A, a dude. <laughs> Don't act in the fist bump, uh, dude. He just wants to show you some love. Oh, 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 oh this is gonna hurt. Oh my god. Oh no, goes for a setup instead of double EX. I like the frame kill at that point. That was kind of nice. Yeah. Add that in there and just set up the timing of it really well. Big block. Just, this is all Reno. Cool has got to gotta really like dig deep here. Got to find some Stormbringers. Got to get some life back and really try to turn this back around. What I've been saying is just that this Yashiro has felt like it's gotten better and better with every game. <sighs> We're even anything going on here. And Kula knows I don't want to fireball. Yeah, or, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to throw anything out because, yeah, there's a big fist going my way. Nice 5A. Nice and simple. But all that time spent, only 18 seconds left on the clock. Hydrant almost gets nothing in return. But Kula's played so solid with this character. I think as long as he doesn't make a big mistake in this situation, it won't feel too bad. To him, this is almost four EX Moon Slasher stock. Oh no. That air fireball from Kula could have spelled doom in that one combo. Reno missing opportunity. Not very often that happens. Kula takes some lucky stars. Yeah, yeah, that easy hiding combo situation there. Now we're just, yeah, both players don't want to just throw it away. Nice. Love the max here. Gonna get finish it off. No, not quite. Go for the super. Oh, I guess it is second, so a little bit more difficult to fit it into that combo. And just taking the lead, I think he almost spent the max because of how little opportunities both players are getting. Just wanted some sort of damage. Oh my god, this just denying it until the four, the, the the one full jump, as I say it right, gets moon slash. No problem here. Reno, one character away. The Rio is all stands in a way into a chance in Grand Finals winner side. Kula with the three bars. I mean, as we know, Rio damage. Dumpster is a big truck, and he hits and hurts like one, looks like one. It's crazy. Yep. Showing off that 2C is so nicely. In the corner, okay. though. With cancels. Okay. Yeah, trying to keep him caged in, but finds a big hit. It's his opening here. Set up. Nice block. Yeah, Kulu cool not trying to take a chance on the cross cut or anything, just respecting it. Happy to block it out, but has to get rid of Hyder and like much faster. The more time you spend, the more happy Reno is to bring in the Oyashiro if the you know, Oyashiro has to come in. There's like one saving grace, which is that he, well, not this, not this specifically. This is not a saving grace GG. because it's a, <laughs> it is a disgrace. We were <laughs> moving on to the grand finals. Reno taking a three to two over Kula. Great stuff. I was going to say the saving grace is that Rio actually has four bars. So if like he had to find a way to dispatch the, the get rid of the 
the Hydran. Um, I, well, I mean, I guess the last one went kind of long because both players were so willing to play safe down back. So even longer than a normal set would go in KOF because of just the confidence in both players neutral. That's why it went down all the way to the wire. As we get into this one, Yurikov playing the uh, the business team again. Absolutely. Benny, Benny Rock Iori. So mixing up a little bit again. We'll see New York, yeah, Fernandez we don't see too often, so they got an interesting pace that they play. I've been a fan, as they just uh, been making it work out for them, but let's see what they can deal against. The one and only Mike and Coon. Nice neutral draw. Ooh. Wow. Really clown it all. Wow! Any try jump? <laughs> Giri needs to kill. So just gonna wait it out. I smell a dash punch in the future. There's the block, not a kill. And a reversal. I mean, you're a cop. I see you. I see you. Here we go. Our lights, though. So, yeah, spends the super at the end of it. Could have been worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the money maker. Nice jump. Best jump normal in the game. Benny Air Throw. AKA Benny Jump C. Ready? Giving him a good go. life to get here. Absolutely. Whoa. But you know, Mary can steal that back. Until the back dash almost gets sniped. Oh, I like that command normal. EXEI denied, and this is all good. All well and good. A small slicer? No? Okay. Yeah. You see. Fernandez trying to fight for this positioning here. Great arrow. EP out of the corner. Another wake up EXEI. Like. I love that so much. Respect me, please, right? Do you think I'm going to DP? No, let me just do the quick one. Nice back dash, but no punish? Uh-oh. Or cancel. Trying to get some space behind them, but Fernandez is just so good at controlling the pace right now. Finds an EX command grab. A little bit of extra damage on top of which, but yeah, that's a little bit of a different command grab. That would have worked on most other characters, but not Mary. All right, there we go. Yurikov finally getting out the better taking the better monitor down. That took a lot of work and effort, but that again, that's the power of Benamaru. Alongside Geese, one of the strongest point characters. So Yurikov now, feeling time to be aggressive, is now getting those close Cs as anti air slash uh, throw option selects. And then yeah. just continuing happy to throw. Here we go. Rock is down. Oh, oh no, no, not quite. Wait. Okay. It's fine. There we go. No problem. He's the bar too. Ooh, that's dicey. Yeah, confident in in your play there. Even though you didn't kill Yurikov in a really good position. Fernandez going to the anchor. We saw the Iori do a lot of work in the previous set that he was on. But they had a little bit more meter than this. They have a long way to go. Oh, and this is big pressure. I know Yurikov doesn't want to go for a magical arrow. Doesn't want to take that risk yet, but... Does it there? It's gonna have to wait for it. Kind of does a neutral, looks out, and then uh, Yurikov's run up throws. Worst thing that happens, you take the throw and it keeps on going. Nice to be. Oh, <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. You make the you make the most out of it. It's a slicer. Has meter still here? Quick max. Oh, the punish. Wow. Good backdash. Tough for Fernandez, lost a lot of health on the way there, but actually has more meter than he started the round. So there is a silver lining here. That level two sparkler combo does so much damage. They can get an opportunity to hit it. They can almost turn this into a two touch situation. The rare jump, eh? I like that. But Yurikov gets a grab. It's party time. Same side, nice. Simple, easy game, Yuri out of here. And game one to Yurikov. Should be no problem. There it is. Yeah, great stuff. Yurikov taking the first game there. I weathered the storm uh, of the pressure with Yuri early on, and then just again, Yurikov is always ready, just is, is happy to map, is, go for throws. Is, is yep. it up, even on defense, offense, either way, it's like, hey, it's unblockable. Worst thing that happens, we reset to neutral, and I could just keep trying again and again. Yeah, no, no big deal. So really feeling like that most of the issue here was just the rock not being able to get much started. But both the Benny and the Yori looking really good on Fernandez. Yurikov. 
good balance between all of his characters, getting a lot done there. Definitely helping him take that first game of two. As a re-reminder, only one more for Yuri Kopp to move on to lose his finals. Okay, let's see. This might get shut down pretty heftily in game one, but right now it's like Yuri Kopp's finding their bearings, gets the throw because they were committed to anyway, needs to roll out, gets caught low, no big deal though, for damage gets some damage, but you're not the yellow one. Pulls up back, I like that. Yeah, Good trying decisions. to make... Oh my god, another wake up guy. Oh. Wow, <laughs> the ABC baby. You wouldn't mm -hmm. expect him to have it there, but he definitely did. Yeah, even getting like tagged by that jump B, it's like, okay, I didn't get combo, but still holding, maintaining the charge and doing a good job of it. This is a Yurikov, you know, gets an understanding of how Fernandez plays and is, is in, in their in their comfort zone. Definitely, it's time for Fernandez's rocks to shine right now. It's definitely needed being in this position. Just needs to get the opportunity to play, but dude, that flash kicks on point every single time for this guy. Without a doubt. And the escape to the. Ow, 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 ow. Just getting out of there. Just running away. Making it so hard. And see him holding it down. The jump scare is there. And, uh. You know, your is just full, full, ready to go. No problem. Oh, fireball spent really well. And not minding spending an extra EX for the EX flash kick because Yuri Kov, two characters up. I dare to say it's over yet. Tough spot here if you're Fernandez. Getting tagged already like that, it's already difficult. It's this is a situation that you can't easily escape from. You have to go for like the EX, uh, his, I forget the, the name of it. He's the, he's, he's got the grounded anti fireball EX. That's not a bad one. If oh, you're big downward if, if you're ready for it. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Nice grab, though. Okay. Definitely underrated tool, because it's like, it, it does have a lot of startup, but it's plus on block even. So even if you're wrong, like, as long as you don't get, like, flash kicked or, you know, DP'd out of it, you still put yourself in a pretty good position. Okay. It's not a good position right now, though, as no. Fernandez is down just to the Yori against Blue Mary and Isla. Did it come up fully to the Rekkas? Yurikov, though, ready to swing. Oh, oh, cut your back, Dash. No escape. Worst feeling in the world. <laughs> Amazing. We're covered in time. Gets a grab. More pressure here. You're cut all in on offense. Yeah, and you, when you're trying to, to crack a defensive player of the caliber of Yurikov, looking for that opening here. Oh, okay. Do it again. Are we Got feeling like that, or is that an inputter? Got a climax ready. Got to be careful here. That's okay. It doesn't come to fruition, but the fear of it. That could have been it. Not quite yet. One more touch for your cobble. Do the job. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe playing a little bit of KOF 14 style. Just pop a neutral and see what goes. <laughs> just, but... <laughs> At least like they, they buffed it. Like always like for the match, Reno, they are gone. That is 1250 locked and loaded. If you want to make direct contributions, that is always appreciated. But right now it is uh, they're fighting for the full unlocked code uh, prize pool. So again, big ups to all y'all. So a little bit of a change here for Yuri Kov, putting on the Clark instead of the Blue Mary, and then switching up the team altogether. You want to go for this? Go for it in game one of the first three. So mm -hmm. don't mind it early on here. And I know I think this isn't a bad matchup for Clark. I think sometimes he doesn't like playing against a character that has that much control, but being able to contest Benny's sweep by having a six framer of your own, really nice. Nice. Ooh, oh, the punish no! though. Could have maximized it maybe a little bit more, but I mean, damage is damage. Reactions already here from uh, Kula. Starting to trade and turn this back around. Here you already showing off why Benny's uh, air throw a little bit better than Clark's. Hoop! Snatch him. And just yeah. building up bar for level one. Yeah, we just want to make sure. Better Mario is gone. Scaling be damned. Plant him in the ground and uh, Clark gaming. Yeah, starts off strong. Going into this next round here. No meter though. So that threat. Oh, yeah. Gets away from the Frankensteiner. Gets a nice punish as well. Cleans up the Clark. 
all that DP bar, the meter gain. So yeah. damn good. Keeping this character just fully tanked. And DPs cast up. Oh. build so much meter in this game. Uh, on average, every character's best move to gain meter is a DP. So this character being able to put two DPs into the combo means that they can keep up their meter efficiency so well. Oh, good spot here though. Cool. What an uppercut again. So hard. Oh, and the Eddie word juggle. You're hurting here. Again, this is just like you, you want to jump. You don't want to like play a grounded game against this character. You jump and then you jump and you know what happens? You take all that. Oh. Up. Nice. Patience there. The, uh, the 4C on top of that. Big throw. Good for uh, your call. Finds the, yeah, this is a, I love the strings there, right? Starting with a close A, which is plus on block, and setting up for like, the close lows. Maximizing damage here. And then just full send. Kula believed in victory, but Grand Blue is not until after this. Great presence of mind there for Yuri Kov. That reset situation, very common for Tesla players to continue on their pressure. Yuri Kov using that information as a bait. You know, looks like we have more uh, Yuri Yagami uh, ready to go, but you know, Yuri Kov is more than happy to deal with this character. Minty with the $30. Oh my god, not only is she holding it down production wise, she is holding it down for the prize pool. So everybody, please, big a big thank you to Minty in the chat for being the A1 All-Star here at Tampa Never Sleeps. Kula in a really good position right now. The, the four and a half bars. A lot of kill combos here that are, that are access to Iori. 100% combos from, from various different starters. Oh, there we go. We got the charge just in time. Yurikov's happy to take this, this lead in the corner. Getting it out. All cool is just the one. Oh, no Shatter Strike. That is like Shatter Strike City. You see those slippy kicks. Still a scary position, even with this life lead for Yurikov. And he understands that. Ooh. Playing very defensively here. Understanding. Oh, it could have been it. Not quite, though. 25 seconds left on the clock. Cool is ready to explode. Oh, my Ooh, God, he is. There, it is. there it is, buddy. The little bit of the stagger to B is opening up his opponent. No, he dropped it. Oh, that got too cute. But Yurikov takes it to the bank, says Sayonara, buddy. You should have stick what you know. But Fireworks into Climax was a very, like, if you're going to do level two into Climax, I would have liked to see just uh, the standard Maiden Masher. Just get getting the, the 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 I don't know. It was an idea, but it just didn't pan out, and that drop cost game one. Yurikov smiling like Clark right now, like no big deal. <laughs> move. Yeah, that's that one's real tough, man. Um, that's not even the combo you usually see in that situation. You usually see the the you know sparklers into EX afterwards. So, I mean, I, I think I talked about it at some point. I don't remember if I did today or, or last month or whatever. But some players are really good at just keeping it nice and simple when they need to. Some players need to do the combo that they always do. So, I mean, it, that, distinguishing what kind of player you are and understanding, you know, that's the combo that you have to go for is a big deal. However, <laughs> the read that Yurikov made and put Minku first and it's the Yori first, so it's just running this matchup back now with points. <laughs> I would say probably this actually is better for Minkun than the Yori. But Plus. we'll see how this plays out, unless Kula proves me wrong. Should say, by the way, you know. Order change for both players. And Texas Showdown champion in the in the uh, chat right now. Oh, Mr. Jack. Yeah, give those congratulations to Mr. Jack, who did an amazing job in this light punish level one. Yeah, keep it simple, stupid. Into the bunk. Well, that done. sucks. <laughs> hey, I mean, you went, you took the risk, you pay the price. This isn't a game like some exciting games like DPs like that. 
will have like a hard knockdown or something. If in case of that situation happens, you can't like recover and punish. it. Okay, well, it's like that. Nah. However, we are looking at Kula. Definitely not over just yet. Trade in neither's favor. Maybe in Yuri cause being able to get some space behind them. Oh, it hits it. Just full sends it. All right, that's actually the best case scenario for Kula. Had really not too much problems against the other two characters. Mm -hmm. Clark had an early start. I mean, did did win the point war, but then it was like full steam ahead for Kula. So let's see what happens here. Nice air throw. Back at you. Oh, I can do that. KUDP though? No, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Frankensteiner is invincible, but yeah. We'll say though, uh, Clark on second definitely gets gets the access to as many EX tackles as they want. Yurikov not been able to get it just yet. Another air throw attempt from Yurikov. Another Reed. air throw attempt yeah. from Yurikov. <laughs> you can't take the guilty gear out of the player sometimes. It might not be the Milia anymore, but it definitely has that jump throw in them. Not over just yet. Kula, though. There like, is, so much control, so much patience in these situations. All right, yeah, this is good. I mean, you want, I mean you're happy with that matchup, right? You the Ben Amar versus the Clark. It's going to be the Isla. It's two full characters here on the side of Kula. Wants to tie things up 1-1 one -one here. It's the first to three winner fights Reno in Grand Finals. As we're winding down here for KOF on the Super Saturday at Tampa Never Sleeps. Nice. Full jump in B. Wasn't anybody get the full combo? Oh, but they'll take that trade and gonna add a little bit to the damage. Okay. You're gonna find a little something here, but still tricky. He's running in. Gets a reset, but hmm. needs to get in that range for those grabs and start that pressure. Ooh! <laughs> Not a shadow strike though, so no wall bounce. Yeah, weird uh, advanced strike air hit. So just leading into a knockdown. Right, it's gonna confirm into the quick, quick max, adding the level two to boo. You gonna attack on a little bit more? Maybe. Yep. That jump a little too telegraphed, and then the EI reversal with the punish as well. Again, Ben Umaru, one of the best characters at punishing most anything because the EI kicks is just one of the best specials for that at that close range. So you think you're fine with, you know, specials that normally are negative enough, but spaced out well enough. Nah, ben Amara denies that one-to-one. -one. Yeah, having a three frame move in general in this game is very, very unique. Very few characters have options underneath the four frame situation, so. Access to a little bit of different punishes. Some characters uh, definitely don't get to be as unwieldy with their specials on block versus some characters like Benny Maru. So great presence of mind in that situation. Definitely that little bit of added extra character speciality when you are punishing with the EXEIs. Great stuff. Tying it up one to one. All right, this time this character order switch works out differently. So, Blue Mary also is making an appearance here. So, we, Clark has been uh, benched as that experiment is over. Different flavor of grappler. A lot cuter. It depends on who you ask. Yeah, all things considered, uh, we are playing a first to two now with Yuri Kov's uh, more business team. So, Kula up in the ante a little bit, a little bit less time. And we're back to the uh, back to the original team uh, composition for Kula and, and Yurikov, I should say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hundred percent. But uh, Yurikov looks like just kind of flailing a little bit. Has to find their timing. But nice check and a punish on the run stop. Oh well, well. Yeah, nice CD. Gets him out of the corner. Good jump in as well. And you see, Kula like likes to run and is stopping well outside of uh reversal range for Yurikov just waiting like even staying out of the range for the crouch B and just shutting down most of Minecraft's options as like Kula doesn't want Yurikov doesn't want to jump doesn't want to like challenge uh Kula 
Whoa. Oh, what a punish too. That was so good in the back row, getting caught by the slash cancel. Kula was so has played this matchup better than most anyone I've ever seen. Like, hands down. That was really well played. Yeah, Mayukun can get frustrating for some players just because it feels like sometimes there's never a good option, but Kula showing off how it's done. Anti airs from both sides. Let's jump normal in the game one more time. All right, the chase down. Mirakov getting on the aggression, but that's kind of the one problem of that run-up throw is that low B can stuff you out, or that CD. Wait a minute. Doesn't want a magical arrow yet, but it's there, and Kula was ready. Oh. Let that one go into the air. Easy peasy punish for Kula. And funnily enough, Yurikov switches to the business team and Kula looks a little bit better. All right, level one. Yeah, this is first to three. So even if Kula wins this, Yurikov will have another chance to stay in it to win it. But oh my God, that just the lingering effect. And then the punish again, what a matchup. This is the last character that, you know, uh, Yurikov wants to deal with as, as a Isla. Oh, straight into the level three. And go, instead of for going to the level two, maybe because they didn't have any meter afterwards. So just cashing out on it. Ta-da! Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, the Isa level three does put you very close. So able to get a uh, decent Oki situation afterwards. That was nice. All right. Uh, but again, this is two big characters. And I mean, like, think of the bowl of oatmeal as Rio's on deck with two bar and ready to crush any dreams. Or guard bar at this point. GG's. That's what this character does. The pressure in the corner is so severe. Just has the ability to confirm off a variety of things that might be little for some other characters, mm -hmm. but can be confirmed into something hefty for Rio. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And that plays into like, um, Kula's range. Because again, they've been playing like a, a character distance away when they get knockdowns and pressure. Like again, one risk. They're, they're in this proper zone where like as an opponent, it's, it feels much harder to make the right defensive options on your wake up, be it a reversal, a rollout, or a jump because of just that little thread that Kula is giving for Yurikov to like you know, overstep their bounds and get caught out, you know? See how this goes. Uh, game number four. Yurikov needing to win two straight here. Cool. One more away to get the rematch against Reno. Yeah, so Yurikov switching to Isla on point. Might and Kun and Isla switching positions. We'll say that even though the Clark's not on the team, the uh, Might and Kun on anchor is the time where Yurikov got the W, so see if that comes back play again or <laughs> like every other character has to deal with the Benny pressure oh there we go cross up it's a deep and makes it count yeah, got some damage here but what an answer again Whoa. it's gonna punish right and it also just works as like a, a two and one cooler please chill out that was that's too much yeah it doesn't have any invincibility but you can it, sometimes you don't expect something that fast to come from wake up. It definitely messes with your Oki options sometimes if you're not ready for it. Benny is, uh, or I should say, Kula is running a clinic with the Benny Mar. Yeah, we know, like, if there was a patch announced, we know Benny Mar would probably get, like, thrown at a dumpster at this point if you watch Kula play. But, Mary, good game of here, level one, nice. Oh no! The punish jumping in the corner. Maybe try to get a little bit cheeky. Yo, <gasps> Yo that Drill? was so sick. Crazy. Kula again just can make it. Is is the MacGyver right now of, of TNS? You you give him a, a paper clip and a and a, a chew piece <laughs> of gum, and he's making like these big old combos from it, and it is magical. And then you have to go into this type of control. It's a little bit different, but 
just as much taxing. And again, it fits uh, Cool's playstyle really well. Oh. Well, forward, big punish. Chance for your cop. Spectacular chance, too. Corner to corner. Yeah, big blocks, but the sweep comes out. Oh, what a DP! Oh. Hitting from downtown here. EX Slicer might be available here. You gotta be careful for your cop, though. One EX Colkin or anything. Do the job of the whip punish again. And again, that is cool space. Cool is just happy to play in the KOF zone. He lives in the KOF zone. He breathes in the KOF zone. So he has to. Oh, yeah, back on a level one. OTG. Is that up? No. Oh, tried to go for a different kind of setup there. Cool, uh, pressing buttons. Oh, we whip him, and we get in pillowed. I love that. Again, that's the the the, the area that uh, your or cool is playing at. They're both just whipping sweep, whipping sweeps at each other. Nothing happens. Hey, does, does Stammy, does uh, Yurikov win this matchup this time again? What happens? What do you think? Oh man. To be fair, Cooler kind of only lost it because what? they went for a different combo there. Let's see how much they want to add. Okay, just double level one. Guard cancel the main forward. DP in the super, buddy. Oh my God! Oh, you're still using that. <laughs> okay, okay. Nice. I got one. Good call out. Yurikov really needed that to hit. Oh my God. Love C anti air. Water roll back, oh. nice. Doesn't even want to take any chip damage. Tough spot here for Yurikov. One more combo will do it. Kula goes for the, the gripper. Don't do it. Oh, oh no, okay. punish. Nice. OTG. Throw. No, it's blocks with the ruckus. EX, that's it. And you, dang, Kula does it. Three to one. Finds the record, gets the guarantee OTG for the finish out. Yurikov takes a suck. Gonna be a barn burner as Reno with the, the the such a good squad. Oh man, I love it. Yeah, great teams on both sides. This one was a really interesting one in winners finals. If you guys are just joining us, the winners final set is was a, a grueling 3-2. A lot of rounds going, you know, post 30 seconds. And then a lot of players, or I should say, both players playing for control more than just the overly aggressive. Oh, big grab from Reno. I don't gotta play grapple to get these throws, but let's see how cool the response, right? So it's gonna be interesting as it plays through, as it's kind of like swinging and brawling and jockeying for position. Nice. nice extension. Yeah, I guess the combo in the corner there. Lula showing off that EXCI already. Hard bar on the side. Ooh, Lula. baby. Almost doesn't mind taking this combo for how long it recovers his own guard bar, but he's putting himself in a pretty interesting situation. Yeah, very high jump B. Pass that throw afterwards. Three, take it back though. Gonna be super even here. A throw won't kill really either character, but right now Chip can do it. Next hit takes. This is just a point war. This is just a point battle, and there's the chip out. Oh my god, that was crazy good. But if this is how this whole set's gonna be, I don't know if my heart's gonna take it. Ugh, yeah. Especially the opportunity for 10 games of this. Oh my god. I wouldn't. <laughs> don't even envy the players, let alone myself. Of course, only Grand Blue players were waiting their turn, but the Moon Slash. Moon comes out early here in North America. Necroid! 5750 to the match. Reno! Thank you so much! That's so awesome! Between you and Minty, you're making this extra nice, so thank you all for contributing to the prize pool and getting these two Titans. Some nice moolah. Yeah, as we get into what was a really big part of the winner's final set hydron mirror felt like whoever whoever came out on top on this one felt like they were the ones who actually were to win it overall yeah and, and like we were saying before the defensive minded kula just so good with this character 
plays multiple different ways. Doesn't mind spending all of his EXs on Moon Slashers. Doesn't mind spending for that combo into a, a wonderful, ambiguous Oki situation. Ooh, finally! Cool did that earlier, right? Did those roll cancels super well. So call out the damage is huge and finally like shook up the, the mirror match because it was a whole lot of like just uh like like you know pepper in little normals here and there. Also big thank you, Dr. Sauce for the five dollars to the match arena. We're up to a hundred and five dollars by the way. And that's incredible. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. You see Kula going through that defensive style. Especially versus Oyash. Oyash wants to get in. Doesn't really have any way to force his way in other than, you know, playing regular KOF. Stormbringer, jump towards the corner. So many. It, it throw, he throws him so far down, too. It's not like right at his feet. He just, like, chunks him. So, perfect spot here for uh, Kula with just maintaining this hider. And then double. Oh, I love that come out. That was mm, beautiful. Oh, slightly negative into. In the EX Moon Slasher. Not something he does all that often. Okay. Might as well spend on here. But yeah, because it was like the, the scaling on it, doesn't want yeah. to spend too much. Because I, I don't. Level 2 doesn't. I don't even think level 3 kills. So yeah. No, no. There, there's no point. Alright, Kula found his way out. Uh, Kula needs a lot more hits. <laughs> doesn't have the meter to finish the job off like one crouch C, but it's still a tough spot. The crossover. 10 seconds left. Worst spot if you are Reno here. You're barely gonna get any life back. If you can even manage to get rid of Hydern. That's more command grab from either player. Oh, oh, no! No! Oh, oh, what the hell? Did he go for the air one? That had to been the anti-air one. Was that the oh it was the that air one? Might have been right, the C right. version that only grabs airborne opponents. So Reno either yeah, didn't get the EX one. or the A1, so just didn't get the grabbing, didn't get the kill. And that was a wrap. Yurikov does in chat. Yeah, it's just tragic, right? It has the same whiff animation to it. Yeah. But you gotta remember, yeah, Moon Slash does not go airborne whatsoever. So you have to see ground and command guards for punishes. Maybe he missed one. double buttons. Didn't even need to do that, right? Just needed a regular one. At the very least, and spend the bar, but I mean, it happens. Yeah. We move. Oh, you do that. It was a nice start here for Kula again, just carrying that momentum from a loser's finals and is uh, maintaining some great pressure here. Oh my god, the EXDB threw what I think sounded like an advanced strike. Missed the drill that time, but I mean, like, look how, look how well Kula is right now. Just a show, although, we know, wait a minute. Interesting he's been on this one with this low of a life lead, anything goes. Keep it moving. That's what momentum is the name of the game. But chip out is one of them two or a far beat of the face. Ow. Yeah. Good stop sign button for Benny Maru in that situation. Very well done. Did extend the round a little bit longer, so dropped it under that 30 second mark. So definitely not just the damage done on that, but time also being a factor as well. Alright, this is just... Ooh, the throw, the chop. And then there's more pressure here as uh, Reno just wants to unlock the mirror match. One more time. Nice. Voice has that on deck. Reno showing it off. Going into this Hydran Mirror. Pretty even. A little with a, a one stock meter gain lead over his opponent. But really, I mean, it, it feels like every single time we've seen this matchup, both players are so struggling to look for that hit that they'll spend anything in order to just get a, some sort of life lead. All right, now here we go again. Are you ready for some chops to you drop? Well, oh, we know what the first one, setting up some pressure here. Both have the meter to make something explosive happen. Just try to get that running hop jump C cross up. Ooh, it has to worry about their guard bar though. Reno knowing that gets aggressive, gets a throw because of it as well. Corner to corner, the chase down. Nice shatter strike, it's huge. Yeah, you can see how the gameplay changes from the opponent once the guard bar is taxed like that. Both players recognizing it. 
This is as mirror as it gets. Both players very, very much look the same like game plan, and they are running through it right now as they're just respect on the respect the plenty, running that clock down. Kula needs to find a hit and fast. There's one has a life lead now, and gets a command grab. A version Stormbringer is unblockable and makes a side swap. This is all Kula. Oh, tried to react with the Moon Slasher. Two seconds left. Oh, takes a hit. Oh, this is not going to be enough. Yes, it does damage on both sides. <laughs> oh, my God. Changing the life lead with Stormbringer <laughs> at the last moment. Reno was able to take it with a timeout of all things. Just cool. Uh, didn't go the way Kula won at the end. One bat, one errant flash, one Moon Slash, and now you know what? After all that, guess who's sitting here with four bars? I wouldn't wish <laughs> this on my worst enemy. I wouldn't wish this on Drake. <laughs> I might. <laughs> Kendrick, yes. Ready? I might. <laughs> what Raph is referring to is that the four bars on the Rio does spell a 100% combo in the right situation. This isn't it, but we're going to cast out a little bit, a lot of it on this. Oh my God. Just needs one more. At this point, yeah, just one EX Shampoo Cock, and that's pretty much a wrap. <laughs> oh, good, great. Relax. Relax. That's unnecessary. You have the positioning. You don't need to do all of this. It's about oh making a statement, God. Sammy. It's about playing, going, playing your way and committing because you knew, right? Remember, that DP wasn't a DP that wasn't, it wasn't YOLO, it was, I know it's going to hit. Oh, no, it was 100%, right? It was 100%, you know, the belief. I know you know it's the belief, I'm just saying. It's, it's just like, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I'm just saying you don't need to take that risk when you have such a lead. But when you're Kula and you're feeling it, when you're a KOF player and you're feeling it, sometimes those come out. Ready? Kula 2-0 up on Rito. Doesn't spell how back and forth this set has been. No, it's been it's been a treat through and through. As right now we're seeing, can Reno get on the board? Stave off that quick. That, I wouldn't say quick reset, but stave off the reset. The 3-0, not the way they want things to go and start out. And right now it is just cool attacking on damage. Reno with the slight lead. As far B versus far B is just <laughs> picking up to far B's. I don't know. RB RBs, yeah. They get me on. Get me RB corporate. I got yeah, a new please. idea for them. Right now, cool with the lead. Oh, but a nice hit. A small juggle. Not gonna. I want to go for super. Anything special there? Oh, and the punish. Yeah, that should do. Uh, how much are we gonna spend? Not gonna get enough for a super, but actually, yeah. Never mind. Perfect. Wow. Yeah, any any character that gets to shove in like a bunch of specials into their combos definitely love playing this point position because they just gain so much meter just by doing their normal combo. Yeah, for sure. Now, cool with the cool with the lead. Looking or not? Sorry, didn't have We know as the lead, but oh yeah, or rather Yash can go down pretty quick. I'm not careful. Oh nice. my god! <laughs> uh, I cannot stress to you how good that button is. And Reno getting a healthy life lead here. But uh 42. Right before, yeah, right before the, the, the last second, Kula gets the max meter or max health back. Nicely done. I mean that's the best case scenario for Kula, right? You have two bars, especially. Ooh, my crouch D I pressed it faster, but Reno gets the running grab. And now we're setting up that nice pressure. But I mean they're, they're with, both with the meter were one perfectly spaced like close D or a crouch C could just turn the tides immediately. Yeah, and even though Reno has this wonderful life lead, especially in such a what has been a grueling matchup between these two of players being able to find any sort of big clean hit. Definitely not over for it. Just <laughs> <laughs> I dare you. I dare you. And they did the jump. The crouch D just gets blown up. Even though the whiff, the whiff cancel the crouch D. It didn't look cool. We're not able to do it, but cool against the crowd C. Here we go. Damage coming. God, it's so damage. Something crossing the lines for the Hydran Hydran communication. <laughs> and now all the things are tied up. Nice. nice. 
face finally rarely ever do we see that actually punished like that that was cheeky it was cheeky but that's great that's cool style it's all low on the action said no we, we're, we're moving we ain't sitting here i've had enough uh, crouch a's for one game and thank you i have avocado for the great name by the way for the sub Kulkin, Kulkin, he's coming, he's inevitable. Yep, has that CDP stocks. And Yesuyo Yuki, uh, Grand Blue is going to be right after King of Fighters, so make sure you stay around for some great NA Grand Blue Fantasy versus action. <laughs> I feel like it hasn't been very often that we've gotten to an anchor anchor with four bars on both sides. But here we are, the volatility completely on deck! Oh no! Oh, we're just gonna get level two, and that's, I mean, level three? And yes. Oh, gonna go level three instead? Interesting. Yeah, so since oh, he spent the EX on Redskin, no need to go for the EX Fireball in that situation, because we won't be able to continue the combo. And gets the jump, it gets the reset! Cool with the 3 0 over Reno, and now we're going into our final set of grand finals. Has Ryo Sakazaki not Sakazaki, he is super strong and super powerful, especially in the hands of Cool right now. God damn, I don't know how many people in chat have heard that one. <laughs> That's an old school. That's an old school one. Oh, good. I heard that one in 13. <laughs> I loved him in that game, bro. Uh, he was fun in that game, but uh, unfortunately yeah. overshadowed by his sister quite a bit. <laughs> well, here we are, Sammy. Final set of the night. 3-0, but man, it felt like it took, it took longer than any other 3-0 I've ever seen to get to that position. Not to say that, you know. How does it go? Oh, 3-0, yeah. but it was close? It was close. I wouldn't say Absolutely. all that. But it definitely was it's definitely showing that Kula has is doing really well, you know, in these little read situations and is coming out much more often than not. And, I mean, we're, we're, we're staying what we got, right? Neither player making like uh, character swaps, no one switching order. It's been all in for what we have. And uh, I love that. Both players just fully committing and what they're comfortable with. And right now we're just going blow for blow. Yeah, definitely a big deal here. Both characters with so much control in front of them in that one third character range. And that's a big jump in. It's going to take him to the corner. Set up. Nice oh, cross up. Cross up. Hadn't seen that yet. Not a lot of opportunities to set it up, but Reno will finally gets a character win on like the point war. I, like had one earlier, but it wasn't like anything to write home about, this time was a solid life lead. This does Astro. feel like the first time that a point character's had a considerable lead going through the second round, so definitely changes up the dynamic of the game. You know, we'll be quite happy. Finally, some momentum on their side in a big way could lead them to their first win. I yeah, love I that cross seat. That was cute. That was cute. More trades. More trades in Reno's favor. Oh, you worried. oh, what a DP. He was finally feeling good. Haven't seen that too much of that from him this set. But it's finally getting, getting that the groove of like movement and decision making and almost had the, the combo there. Oh, yeah. Gonna spend to finish this off. Well done for Reno. Yashiro giving his team a wonderful lead and uh, a, a very unfamiliar position. After eight games versus each other, I haven't seen this before. An anchor character getting all the way to the tail end of a team. Yeah, that tail is the Rio. Advancing strike, no good. Nice roll back. Just to just chill out. Doesn't want the advance or the plus frames to be too effectual. My bars. I'm gonna try to save it. Yeah, if it could, it shouldn't have to spend any other yeah, it does. Doesn't need to. Yeah, a lot of different ways to approach this situation for Hula can use the Ryo to just blow this character up with all five bars. And then kind of try to play fundamentally solid in this last one. Or he can incrementally spend. Definitely up to the player on that one. He saw the fireball. Oh my god. Okay, bye, Hyder. You think? 
I think, think his character it. is. I don't I, I, I see why not. One, Ooh. two, reset. Huh? <laughs> and welcome uh. to Todd. Making a short appearance here. Yeah, I mean, there was a little bit of damage early on, but I mean, like, just a, a faint. That was 90% gone with everything, as Kula reminds you what Rio is all about, and that is just getting the job freaking done. Yeah, so now you get to this anchor, like, the, the reason why you could choose to play incrementally is because you'll gain meter as you go along. Now you're going into this anchor position with zero bars, and Oyash definitely only needs one or two in order to take this from you. Neutral jump CD of all things. But the right button at the right time. Been waiting in the corner now though. Has to be careful if you're cool. Don't want to get gripped up because that's a lot of damage on the table. We can't be predictable. Air, uh, air command grab, anti-air command grab, or the EX uh, advancing throw can be huge here. This is the thing though, is that if we can find a way where we get to this corner position. Oh! Yeah, I gotta spend on the DP. 28 seconds off of the clock. Reno really needs anything right now. Has not even pressed like more than 10 buttons here. No, the whiff! But it's not the great punish. Chicago style punish. Oh, oh the stagger runs trying to mix Kula up and common collected in a healthy position and Kula pulls it back with the Rio. Oh, oh the wall, Sammy. This man is just putting up, he's planning his stakes and just sticking to it, right? That was like over 30 in-game seconds of Oh Yastro not even like pressing anything because recognizing just like the danger that that Kula presents just standing there like short hopping forward and timing all oh, think just so correctly. Kula with the first game of the reset still needs two more to go but Reno with the best chance to at least get a game on the board in Grand Finals, Kula just snatches it away. You gotta feel good if you're Kula. You know, the worst case situation happened and you're still able to pull it all the way back to give you a lot of confidence for the rest of the set. Like, oh, yeah, sure, only used the bar for climax or for max mode, right? Had five, didn't even get to spend any outside of that. And just, it, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of. It a warrior. situation, the, putting Oyash on the anchor position like that, he doesn't have anything that just forces his way in. He doesn't have anything that he just gets to throw out for a possibility of a hit. Uh, I mean, the, he does spend the meter very efficiently. When you're on anchor, he makes comebacks very well because he only needs one bar for the biggest damage. But like, in that position, I think Kula just showed off how to play it against uh, play against the Oyash perfectly. Nice, you know, getting some blows and getting some strikes, but still advantage cool. And here's there. Oh, a good answer to advancing strike. Use a little light normal, block it out, no problem. 13 seconds left. And then just daring Reno to jump, to advance. And again, just the, the spacing. Perfect, immaculate protection. Making sure to back up into that space where you no longer have to worry about the cross up. So everything's in front of you. All you need is a little toe tap to clean it up. And okay, Reno making some space here, just waiting it out. Close C, saving a hider there. That could have been really brutal. Uh, ben Amal was able to land and get a punch. Oh, what? I love it. This, I love the little check. That special move doesn't know how to work sometimes. It's great. <laughs> uh, didn't say punish either, so I think just maybe a scramble situation afterwards. And, uh, you know, only only one anomaly for this set so far. We're back to the standard. The Hydran Mirror. Reminds <laughs> me to hydrate, so I'm going to take a quick swig. <laughs> Both these players grinding it out in this matchup. I don't think there's another way to explain it. I think Kula's happy if Reno's going to sit there and block these. You don't get meter from fireballs unless they're blocked. So that's actually getting Kula a lot of resources here. Just to be able to cash swing out. Guard break is imminent. Instead, it's going to cash out. EX, spin the wheel, and give me that life. So often in this bracket in general we've seen what guard bar has done to people's decision making and how expertly these players have done oh, to gosh. navigate those options those, those tense situations and punish them for having to be more aggressive i'm gonna say like 
maybe Hyder may be the tallest man here, but those dan those dancers legs are meant for, for sprint. Ooh, finally Reno with a clean hit. Needs to make the most out of this. How much for spending? Hundred? It's pretty reasonable. You have to make a two character comeback and you already have enough meter to do it. Stays on the same side this time around though. Cool, yeah. I mean, with bar to make a clean hit do something, but okay. Works out. That's a two touch here for Reno. It's gonna take be the side relief, but get uh, Rio is coming in with three bars and change. And that's why you play Oyash on anchor. It's actually really good in these situations because he only needs a bar to like do 400 plus, 500 plus in some situations. So two characters can literally be taken care of with four bars. So, I mean, you're, you're seeing Oyash right now in two combos. does not have enough ability to kill you. But that means you do need to get the hit, just like last game. You need to find the opportunity to get in. Let's see if Kula even gives Reno that chance. All right. You're in the corner, though. Oh, but just backs out. All the respect to Kula's Reno. Does not want anything of the Banana Man. Just the entire... Maybe Reno trying to look for a, a different entry there, now with four bars. Maybe willing to spend that max mode off of but, far B. But next touch for Kula wins the game. Enough resources here. Even a, a, an air to air into EX hands or just a crouch C will just seal the deal on Reno and put Kula up 2 0. Reno needs a miracle, needs a far B instead the far C from Kula. EXM Pukyok level 2 to calmly and collectively take this to 2 0 lead. Oh! Yeah. Well, once again, expertly playing this matchup. I cannot show you a better way to play against Oyash than Kula is showing it right now. And it's really, I feel like, even after, even if it feels like Kula has been getting the better of the Hydran Mirror or has been, you know, even losing, uh, you know, the point war, most of the time it feels like the Oyash is kind of being this heavyweight in this, at least in this grand finals set. In the winner's finals, obviously, I mean, not as bad being, of a problem. It's being just invalidated. You know, you're not you're not getting the vortex, you're not getting that pressure, and it's just, it's rough out here when you have a character that just can't pull their weight, or especially when you're relying on them to seal the deal and be explosive, and it's just, the fuse keeps just getting puffed out. But now, game number three, Reno really needs to get something going here. Has to win three straight just to taste victory as Kula now down to the last game. First big combo goes to Kula. There's the lead in the corner here with a quick crouching L's or, or crouching B's just to get some small damage and check uh, Reno. That's a throw. That jump B being blocked very high up in there. Very negative on the way down. I appreciate them playing Isaka, keeping the classics coming out here for this grand finals. As they're both just very strong against the players. Nice punish on the roll. Level one to seal it. Those those heels look like they mean business. Benamara wearing the finest of footwear for the job. Very reaction from Kula. You know, that, that kind of a weird roll. I mean, sometimes people get away with that just because it's unexpected. Kula presses the mine there. Great roll catch as well with the far D and the max. And we're getting rid of the many. Hey, you know what time it is, Sandy. It's time for it's time for the, the matchup we know and love. As a Hydran player, I'm all for it. It's fun to watch because it's so high level, right? Mm -hmm. it, these players, it's so little is being given to either player. When people find that opportunity to get in, you know it's a read, it, you know it's a great decision. So the first, only mistake they make is throwing fireballs. That's the funny part, right? Because it's like, you want to because both players are sitting down. But it's just like, the, the that's the, when that's the biggest risk your character takes in a matchup is hilarious. Oh, the chase down. Close D doing the job, and that's huge damage. Reno finally feeling something good here. Yeah, first big hit. It feels like the first time any Hydran in this set versus the other has been able to get a big hit that's not like a fireball jump. And Reno looking really good now. But again, really good. <laughs> And Rio are like the two polar opposites. This man is just 
I don't know what, like, what, what old game I would like equate him to, but right now it's just like this dangerous trap. This set, this character that just is waiting for one shot. Because Reno's life is forfeit next hit. And it feels bad. Doesn't even need to spend the full five bars in order to kill at this point. He's just been chipping it away at his opponent. Going down parry into EXM Peacock. And again, the parry can only be canceled if you actually parry something. And it leaves like extra, not it doesn't add extra recovery, but it like keeps the character like in a situation like that. So what anti airs beautifully, despite the startup on EX Shampukyok, and now Kula, tournament point versus Reno here after going down in winners finals, three to two. What a DP again! Once again, great reactions on the light normal jump in. Feeling like they can okay. confidently fit that DP in there. And finally, Reno able to get something on this Rio. All right. Spending the money and the cash. And now one touch for them. The roll away. The punish. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sydney. It's not over, but this is scary. Got to spend it, actually. So. I like it. But it does remove access to that anywhere juggle in the corner. But they have to meet her again now. EXM Pukok's ready. A parry? A DP super? Well, DP, not DP super. A, 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 oh, hold on. Wait a minute. There we go. Should be it. Okay. Oh, we are going to a game four, folks. You thought it was done and dusted, but Reno survives for a little bit longer as the big dunk comes down. And Rio is finally vanquished for at least one game. Yeah, the reason why I was so curious about him spending the meter is because that Rio in the corner is a threat because of having a variety of EXs that allows him to extend his combo in the corner. So just even getting hit by a jump D or getting hit by a fireball or something like that just leads to so much more damage because of the EXs. So him losing on that opportunity meant that the corner positioning was as much of a threat. But... Reno gets that opportunity and takes it. First time he's been able to get a hit on this Rio at all in this grand final set after six games finally finds the opening and that is the deciding factor. Finally gets his first game. Grand Bloor's gonna hold on just a little longer as it's, it's not a KOF finals until it gets extra spicy here. Now Reno turning it up. Finally maintaining a slight lead here versus the Benamaru. Even getting these trades working out well, but what do you do here? If you're stuck in this corner against Kuro, who's just so good at just putting you in this box. Yeah, it's just expert screen control from this player in general. Doesn't matter what character's on the screen. DP, a little bit of a walk back. Oh, oh. didn't get a deep enough hit. Oh, we're trading blows. Still a good spot for Kuro now, who has that slow lead. The slash comes out, and the jump. Wow, jump C right over the forward B. Kula just threading the needle so well. Yeah, giving himself a, a very familiar lead with the Benny Maru. However, I will say one of, one of the things that has been creeping up is that oh Reno has been getting way more hits with this Hydran, way more clean hits, I should say. This is the biggest we've seen damage get on Hydran though from the Benny Maru. I mean, Reno gets a good cross up. Nice block on the, it hit on the front side and crossed over. But uh, Reed was, Kula was ready. That's just how good a, how good a jump, is, jump C is for Pyre. Truly. Oh my god. Nice. Still pressed after the run up. Confident. Yes. Two, two, I mean, two games to get, right? And that's a lot of meter spent as Reno is just trying to bring out this mirror match. Should be able to with one more hit. No problem. I dare you. I dare you. Come here. Come here, buddy. He dared. Oh. And you know what? He painted it. I like that. Yeah. No friends. Go! No! For oh, we've seen the EX command grab in quite some time, and it's the perfect time. Kula, two characters up on Reno, and it's time for the Oyash. Man, Beber Maru, character of all time, right? Great jump ins, great normals. Got a DP, got like fast specials, has a command grab because it's KOF, and it's just like. This character wasn't good for a while. This character was like, okay, right? He was the sea of okay characters, but then just... 
finding his home here as such a good character. I had to grab. Okay, okay. Had to do something a little bit cheeky in order to clean up the round without having to spend meter, and I don't mind it one bit. But almost four bars. So definitely the meter on the bottom end, enough to take out two characters. It's just about finding the opportunities versus a, char a guy like Kula versus a character like Hydran and Ryo can be quite difficult for Oyash. All right. Oh, and the sweep just punishing all these little things. That's just, ink that's just a little damage that adds up. It gives Kula a bar. Oh, with your hands. Come here, bro. Nice. Okay. So not going to get a lot of damage on this one, but what it does is give you this wonderful setup. Nice. Snatch him up again. Keep this pressure going. What a roll out yeah, roll. Yeah, don't mind it. Takes the positioning. Jump A from Oyash, just as good as his regular counterpart. Way too close to a grappler. Like that, though. <laughs> Extra spooky for cool. Gets away with murder. 24 seconds on the clock here. Nice anti air. Life total super close here. One more hit from Kula will give him the lead. Putting up that pressure. I would love to see just. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Get him out of here. So one. Yeah, almost no reason to spend extra. You're not going to get that much meter left back or help back. Let's, Let's, go. Chase down. Let's go, level one. Spin the wheel. Give me the Stormbringer. And with that. Kula just needs the one cross up, the one grab, the one chip out, the block, the jump away, the fade away, one. Oh no, oh no, that's gonna take too much time, and off screen, it doesn't matter, Kula <laughs> is able to take the set on a timeout of all things. Three to one.